Yeah, they do have that obligation, but I think probably the worry that a lot of fans are going to have is, is, is how damaging this season could potentially be. Is it going to leave some scars heading into the championship or do they have enough to, to push straight back up again? Well, no, is the answer they don't. And I do agree with you that those scars can carry over to the following season. I mean, what I would say is that I think there's 17 players either on loan or out of contract. So there's a real chance to, to sweep clean with a new broom and, and bring new players in. But the, the thing is as well that the players were brought in at the start of last season weren't really Sheffield United type players. And they didn't really have that kind of personality, the character that, that United players have had of, of, of recent past. You know, three of the five years, last five years have been spent in the Premier League. And yet you look at this squad and you're no idea what's going to happen next season. Honestly, I have much more confidence in Luton, Faye, and certainly Burnley, to try and bounce back up than I do Sheffield United as we speak. So recruitment itself is going to be so, so important. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, a big final day in the Premier League. Lots to still be decided. It seems like it's straightforward, but there's been so many twists and turns this season. Perhaps there's just another little corkscrew on its way. You can listen to Arsenal versus Everton on Talk Sport. They need to get their own job done and hope that Manchester City slip up against West Ham in order to win the Premier League title for the first time in 20 years. Otherwise, it goes to City and the Etihad for a fourth season in a row. Here on Talk Sport 2, though, and by the way, I should remind you, you'll know all of the results. We've got a full classified results service at 6 o'clock over on Talk Sport with Adrian Durham, who's based at the Etihad. We'll be watching uh, a celebration from the Sky Blue fans and Pep Guardiola. We shall see. At Bramall Lane, though, sit back and enjoy live and exclusive national radio commentary of Sheffield United against Tottenham Hotspur with your commentators, uh, Scott Minto and Joe Shannon. Thank you, Faye. Good afternoon, everyone. And an absolutely glorious afternoon all across the country as the curtain falls on another Premier League season. The title still to be decided. One more relegation place still to be mathematically confirmed, though, of course, Luton looked dead certs for the drop. And here at Bramall Lane, Tottenham know that a point will be good enough to secure fifth place and Europa League football for next season. If they lose and Chelsea beat Bournemouth at Stamford Bridge, then it will be the former Spurs boss, Maurizio Pochettino, pipping his old club on the very last day. But surely Tottenham, even after the week that they've had, even after the recent weeks that they've had, can't throw it away from here. They're up against an already relegated Sheffield United side that has to rank as one of the worst in Premier League history. Here are the two teams, following them in goal for Sheffield United. I mean, Hodzic, Trusty and Robinson, the defenders. Bogle and Lowe, the wing-backs. Harmer, Arblaster and Osborne in midfield. Archer and Brett and Diaz up front. And for Tottenham, Vicario in goal. Porro, Romero, Dragushin and Van der Ven. Saar, Bentancourt and Madison in midfield. Kulosevsky and Johnson, either side of Son, up front. The subs benches for Sheffield United, Davis, Brewster, McBurney, Vinny Souza, LaRussi, McAtee, Holgate, Brooks and Jebison. And for Tottenham, two goalkeepers, Austin and Whiteman, Skip, Poibier, Gill, Royale, Scarlett, Moore and Donnelly. Well, it is just a picturesque, classic end of season afternoon. The Bramall Lane playing surface is absolutely bathed in beautiful, bright sunshine and a cloudless sky overhead. We are in the main stand, just to the right of the halfway line. As we look to the left, the Tottenham players go into a huddle, very close to where the away fans are, away to our left-hand side in the lower tier of the west end of the stadium and Sheffield United have just emerged from their huddle as well. Sheffield United in the red and white striped shirts, black shorts and black socks, and Tottenham in their change kit today, dark blue shirts and shorts and white socks. And nine months of another extraordinary Premier League season all comes down to this. Will it be Manchester City or Arsenal to win the title? And will it be Tottenham or Chelsea to secure fifth and with it, Europa League football. Spurs know a point will be enough today to do that. And we are off and underway. Live.
Live and exclusive on Talk Sport 2. And an early touch for Romero at the heart of the Tottenham back line. Pedro Porro scampers in field from the right back position. It's given away. And Sheffield United have it now with Trusty midway inside his own half the field. You can hear the raucous noise of the Sheffield United fans on four sides of the ground. Arms outstretched, many of them standing up in the sunshine. The greasy chip butty song as Pedro Porro has gone down, has to be helped to his feet. The referee is Andy Madley. He's stopped the game and Tottenham, I think, will get possession back here in the first 40 seconds with the score still nil-nil. Scott Minto, former Chelsea defender, alongside me for the afternoon. Scott, of course, a lot of excitement surrounding the Premier League title, but Spurs and Chelsea do not like each other. And as far as bragging rights and Europa League football is concerned, Tottenham are desperate to hold on to fifth place. No, absolutely. And obviously there's a rivalry with Arsenal. There's also the rivalry with Chelsea. I remember playing for, I remember playing for West Ham as well, the rivalry with, with Spurs. So, you know, th th it's definitely there. And that can make it very difficult for Spurs, which actually makes it even more, you know, well done to Aaron Jan Spurs if, if they are able to finish fifth this season. Look, they're playing against the worst team, not just this season in the Premier League but you know we've seen for, for many a year in the Premier League so they just need at least a point they should get that to finish fifth which I think would be a, a very good season indeed just three wins for Sheffield United all season in the Premier League 16 points and they've conceded 101 goals the ball is with Bogle for them far side of the field a long way from my commentary position and he puts it back into his own territory where Trusty the former Arsenal defender is on the ball so it'll be Manchester City or Arsenal for the Premier League title today. Two points separate those two teams at the start of the afternoon. Arsenal will be champions if they win and Manchester City fail to win. Luton are about to have their relegation from the Premier League confirmed mathematically. And indeed, Nottingham Forest already lead Burnley by a goal to nil, the first goal of the final day. Here's Brereton Diaz looking to dart through the middle and he's rifled it over the top. Big chance for Sheffield United. Romero was backpedalling. Brereton Diaz got that first. He hammered it goalwards, high over the top of the bar. Let off for Spurs, nil-nil. A oh, massive let off. And his poor defending, just a, being asleep, the Spurs defence. And that's a wonderful chance, you have to say. It was a poor header from Dragostan. Mickey van der Ven tried to get there and he should have just backed off, he didn't. The ball was played through to Brereton Diaz, who had a wonderful opportunity. Yes, he had Romero coming down on him, but he just needed to wait that extra split second for the ball to come down. And the fact that he took it when it was so high meant that he wasn't able to get on top of it. It's ended up going over, but what a wonderful chance for Sheffield United. And the game has been stopped again here because Ben Osborne's gone down midway inside the Tottenham half. So 0-0 here, live on Talk Sport 2. Confirmation of the goal that's been scored at Turf Moor. Chris Wood has Nottingham Forest into the lead. So Nottingham Forest leading away at Burnley. And of course, Luton's hopes of survival were, were nothing really coming into the day. They had to win, hope Forest lost and that there was a 12-goal swing. It's not going to happen, and by the end of the afternoon, Luton will be confirmed as being relegated, along with Burnley and Sheffield United. There's a goal in the game at the GTEC. Brentford lead Newcastle by a goal to nil. That goal from Ivan Tony is now being checked for a possible offside. But as it stands, Brentford lead Newcastle by a goal to nil, and that would push... And Manchester United up into seventh place. Blimey. Manchester United will have the FA Cup final to come against City at Wembley, and that way may well be Manchester United's route into Europe. A long delay here as Osborne is slowly helped to his feet. We've had four minutes, it's nil-nil, and Tottenham know that a point for them is enough to guarantee fifth spot. Yeah, just on that Brentford game, Ivan Tony could do with that goal, couldn't he? Oh, yes. England prospects. And that goal has actually been overturned for offside. So nil-nil, Manchester City lead by a goal to nil against West Ham United. We're just being told, and Manchester City know that a victory will guarantee them the Premier League title, and Phil Foden has them in front inside the opening minutes of the Etihad. So that's bad news for Arsenal, of course, but Manchester City will be the Premier League champions as it stands, and would you believe it, it's the Stockport lad, Phil Foden, who's got the goal, what a moment for him on the final day, 
Manchester City lead by a goal to nil, and that's got the Tottenham fans bouncing with delight, as you'd expect. News has filtered through to Spurs supporters. Manchester City lead. They will take the title ahead of Arsenal. Arsenal nil, at nil, Everton nil. But it's pointless for Arsenal as long as Manchester City are winning. Yeah, the Stockport Iniesta. He's some player, <laughs> isn't he? The Football Writers Player of the Year. I personally would have given it to Declan Rice because he was able to handle that price tag, but I certainly can't argue against Foden getting in it. If he were to get the winning goal and you get the feeling there could be a few more coming from Manchester City, and it'd be very apt with the season he's had. But I think Andrew will be having a go at the Spurs fans for jumping up and down today. <laughs> After all the furore in the midweek, Osborne back on his feet, throw to Tottenham in the right back position. So Manchester City already a goal up. You can relax Tottenham fans here. It's been given away, though, to Low, and now Brereton Diaz on the edge of the area. Jinx away from Kulosevsky. Poor challenge from behind by Kulosevsky. Free kick to Sheffield United, right on the edge of the penalty area. Nil-nil. It's really clever play from Brereton Diaz. He picks up the ball in the pocket of space, and he kind of just moves his body to just protecting the ball. And Kulosevsky, I don't know how many times we've seen it this season, he wants to try and help out. But quite often he doesn't, he just gets the man instead of the ball. And look, Spurs have not started well at all, and we're talking about they're up against the, the worst team in the Premier League this season and for many a season, and yet they could easily be one down already. If this goes in, it could have been two. They, they need to sharpen up. And on the ball in the sunshine here is Gustavo Harmer, who is excellent from set plays. Sheffield United's player of the season, Breton Diaz is standing over it as well. 22 yards out or so, left of centre as we look at it, at the Tottenham end of the stadium, seventh minute, nil-nil on Talk Sport 2, but Tottenham under threat early on here. Four in the wall, including the man lying down behind it. Harmer curls it right-footed, and it's gathered by Beccario into his chest, the yellow-clad Tottenham goalkeeper, who generally has had an excellent season, and the danger after that free kick is gone and scoreless it remains. Yeah, he did really well, because what he did, he, he stayed where he was, he, he had trust in his wall, it would have been some strike to get it up and over when it was really close, probably only 19 yards out, so really close to the 18-yard box. So we just said, right, I'm going to have faith in my wall, I'll stay where I am, and in the end it was a, a comfortable save. But it's not been a comfortable start from Spurs. Need to get hold of the ball. We knew that Sheffield United, almost the shackles off. We heard what Chris Wilder said before the game, we want to try and play for pride, and I think he decided already as to who's going and who's not. We know a lot of the, the senior pros have gone. But there's no doubt about it, United want to start well than I have. Lost their last six, Sheffield United. No win in 13 in the Premier League, going back to the 10th of February. Already relegated. Tottenham have possession now with Kulosevsky. Poor ball from Kulosevsky. Continuing Tottenham's sloppy start to the game. The ball is in the centre circle with Archer. The Sheffield United were playing from right to left in the first half. And Tottenham from left to right towards the Coppe. They've got the ball with Pedro Porro. I can see Ange Postacoglu all in dark blue, a dark blue a jumper, it looks like. Uh, a very steep drop to the touchline down below is where he and Chris Wilder are standing either side of the halfway line, even in the warm conditions today, Scott. Absolutely. I'm absolutely loving this big bright yellow thing in the sky. I've not seen it for months. I haven't months. seen it for... It wasn't that long since you and I were wearing thermals <laughs> at Luton a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely. But look, I, I actually think this is probably the worst time to play Sheffield United because they've got nothing to lose and they're just absolutely going for it. Here goes Van der Ven, though, for Tottenham, poking it wide to the left-hand side, and Son, live with the edge of the penalty area, Son waits for the run of Van der Ven on the overlap, pulls it back across, cleared away by Ahmed Hodzic at the near post, and Sheffield United, despite whatever valiant effort they may put in, concede so many goals and are so leaky defensively that even though they've scored 35 in the Premier League, so far this season it just hasn't amounted really to anything at all only Sunderland and Derby across the history of the Premier League have picked up, picked up fewer points in a single season and the 16 Sheffield United have managed Spurs have won a throw far side there left down by the corner flag it's Sheffield United nil Tottenham Hotspur nil live and exclusive on Talk Sport 2 so Spurs getting the point that they need to finish fifth and get Europa League football ahead of Chelsea and in the other Hugely important tussle in terms of the title. Manchester City already lead West Ham by a goal to nil. So it's irrelevant what Arsenal do as it stands. Manchester City will win another Premier League title. They'd be champions for a record fourth straight time. Yeah, but all the while it's 1-0. West Ham could just get that lucky goal. So Arsenal have to control the controllables. Just like Spurs do here. You would expect Chelsea to beat Bournemouth in the, the form they're in. So they need to get at least a point. Dinked in by Harmer, Brett and Diaz! It's the post! 
the flag stayed down. He raced in, darted in towards the back post there. The Chilean international, Breton Diaz, got his right foot to it. Point blank range, could only glance it against the woodwork. And Spurs can breathe a sigh of relief again. What well, must Ange Postacoglu be thinking? Well, he, he must have known, although perhaps he didn't quite realise. Again, you look at the stats and it says that, you're talking about the 100 goals conceded plus the, the 16 points. Only two teams have done worse. They've lost the last six. There's no win in 13. You should almost just turn up and, you know, they'll roll over. But this is the very last game of the season in the Premier League. For how long, we don't know for Sheffield United. These players have been playing almost all season with carrying what must feel like 10 kilos on their shoulders because of the pressure with how this has gone. It's a beautiful day. Nothing to lose now. And they look as if they're the team going to make sure they finish in a European place, not the other way around. Chelsea nil, Bournemouth nil, by the way, at Stamford Bridge. So as it stands, Tottenham will be absolutely fine. They've got the point that they need, but they are on the ropes a little against already relegated Sheffield United. Bogle down by the corner of the penalty area, whipped in by Ahmed Hodzic. Harmer looking to arrive at the far post. He's brought it down, he's pulled it back and cleared away by Romero from inside his own penalty area, high upfield. Tottenham leaden-footed and slow to every second ball in the early stages here, even despite an impressive performance at home to Manchester City in midweek. And in fact, many felt Tottenham deserved to get something out of it. Our blaster through the middle to Archer, angle against it. Archer pulls it back across, sliding in as Romero got a good block in. Archer will regain possession, but eventually the flag goes up on the far side of the field, that bright yellow flag of the assistant referee. It's a free kick to Tottenham, but Tottenham are getting nowhere near the game in the first 12 minutes, and they're lucky Spurs that it's still nil-nil. Listen, Joe, worst case scenario, they could be three nil down. They should be at least one nil down with Brereton Diaz's two chances, one hit the post and one in that first second minute with a shot over, and he's got to hit the target from there. Spurs need to take control of this game. They need to control the tempo. At the moment, it's all Sheffield United. Not seen anything from their midfielders. They're being overrun at the moment. And as I say, it looks like Sheffield United, the team going for Europe. Remember, Chelsea have to win to stand any chance of overhauling Tottenham. They've got to beat Bournemouth and it's still goalless. Here is Son on the attack for Tottenham. Left hand edge of the area, tries to pull it back across. It's deflected behind by Jaden Bogle. And in the end, it must have taken a double deflection. The last touch coming off the Spurs captain, Son. And it's out of play for a goal kick to Sheffield United at the cop end, that huge single-tiered stand with a couple of pillars, half of it in the sunshine, away to our right-hand side. And, of course, whatever happens across the rest of the Premier League season, there will be so much talk about that Hyung min Son chance on Tuesday night, threw on goal against Ortega. Ortega made the save. And now, on this final day of the season, Manchester City lead West Ham and are heading for yet another Premier League title. Pep Guardiola is going to do it again. Here comes Sheffield United. Long way to go. Nil-nil here, but Sheffield United are the better team. As Pedro Porro clears away from the right-back position for Spurs. 13 minutes gone. It's touch forward towards the near side of the right. Johnson towards Kulosevsky. Tackle came in from Trusty. Out of play for a Spurs throw right in front of the Sheffield United dugout. And Chris Wilder is deep in conversation with the fourth official. He looks towards the referee, Andy Madley. What's he upset about at the moment, I, Scott Minter? I, I think it was about that foul by Benton Kurt. What, was it on Osborne? I didn't quite see who it was on, but, you know, he let the play go, he played the advantage, absolutely right. But I don't think he put his hand in his pocket to give the yellow card out. And Chris Wilder and the fans, not happy at all. And there's pressure on Ahmed Hodzic here, back from suspension today, but the... Bosin defender does well to feed Bogle in the right wing back position. He's dispossessed quickly by Kulosevsky. Turns the ball infield to Madison on the edge of the penalty areas. Kulosevsky with a low shot in off the post. Dejan Kulosevsky, that will really settle the nerves now for Tottenham. Their first meaningful attack. And Ange Postacoglu applauds. And Spurs now take a vice-like grip on fifth spot and guaranteed Europa League football for next season. They've started poorly, but almost out of nothing. Kurosevsky with an unerring low drive in off the base of the post. And it's Sheffield United nil. Tottenham hots for one. It wasn't almost out of nothing, Joe. It was completely out of nothing. Spurs very much on the back foot. As I say, could be a goal or two down. With the start that Sheffield United had, I think it's the first shot on or off target. You have to say it was a brilliant strike from Kulisevsky, giving Fodderin no chance whatsoever. But United would be so dis disappointed that they gave the ball away. 
but it was quick one touch play for Kulusevski to find the ball and again how often do we see that a shot go between the defender's legs keeper no chance in off the post a clinical strike can't say Spurs deserve it but it's a brilliant start for them in terms of the scoreline because does anyone see Sheffield United scoring 2-0 and it's Dan Kulusevski who's got the opening goal the man who scored the winner in the reverse fixture in North London earlier on in the season and 1-0 Tottenham lead and there's no chance for Chelsea as it stands. Chelsea, remember, have to win and hope that Tottenham lose here away at the relegated team. Sheffield United will finish bottom and have now conceded 102 goals in the season. And that equals Leicester's tally in the 1908-09 top flight season. So going back across the entire season of top flight football with a maximum of 20 teams, only Darwin in 1891-92 have conceded more goals than this Sheffield United side. Son for Tottenham, left wing position. They look a much more confident side now, Spurs, in that change kit, the dark blue shirt and shorts, white socks playing from left to right. And now the ball is on the halfway line with Dragushin, who has to slide in to send it ricocheting off the shins of Brett and Diaz. Maybe Tottenham aren't fully nerveless yet. And the ball eventually rebounded all the way through to the goalkeeper Vicario there were supporters in the stands away to our right who were waving their arms up into the air it looks like they might be trying to attract the attention of the referee not sure what's going on in and around the lower portion of the cop away towards the far side of the field but the referee has certainly stopped the game now some of the players are directing the attention of the fourth official towards whatever's going on as well and uh, James Madison has gone across towards that far side too both sets of players have been called to the near side now so the game is certainly stopped with Tottenham leading by a goal to nil on TalkSport 2 70 minutes on the clock and there are words exchanged now between Ange Postacoglu, Chris Wilder and the referee Andy Madley it appeared as though that there were Sheffield United fans on that lower portion of the cop end away to our right trying to get the attention of the match officials and I can see from a distance that there are uh, some medical personnel in luminous lime green jackets who've made their way from the edge of the touchline up 10 15 rows or so to where something is going on in that stand we're not exactly sure what is going on but certainly the game has been stopped for now and so the Tottenham players and their Sheffield United counterparts have been called over to the near side of the field a reminder of the latest scores from elsewhere in the Premier League. Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest 2 now. A second for Nottingham Forest. Chris Wood got the opening goal and the second goal. We're still waiting for confirmation of the score. In fact, Chris Wood has got that second goal. Chelsea lead Bournemouth by a goal to nil. But as it stands, it doesn't matter. Tottenham are going to finish fifth and Chelsea will stay sixth in the race for Europa League football in the Premier League. And in fact, uh, Chelsea, well, we thought that they'd got themselves a goal, but it appears as though that hasn't happened. Crystal Palace 1, Aston Villa nil as the latest score. Jean-Philippe Mateta on the score sheet. And most importantly, Manchester City lead West Ham by a goal to nil. Phil Foden with the opening goal. So S Manchester City are going to win the Premier League title. Arsenal nil, Everton nil, the latest from the Emirates. But that is all academic. Elsewhere in the top flight, Brentford nil, Newcastle nil. Brighton nil, Manchester United nil, Chelsea nil, Bournemouth nil, Liverpool nil, Wolves nil, and Luton nil, Fulham nil. You are up to date and we're back underway here at Bramall Lane after that stoppage to play. There are still what look like medical personnel on the far side of the cop end of the stadium in the very bright sunshine, but play continues here with Tottenham in possession and Tottenham in the lead, Scott Minter. Yeah, just hoping... <clears throat> Obviously, we don't quite know what's happened, but if there is a medical situation and that person is OK, that hopefully the fact that the game has started so quickly means that the person will be OK. Well, I'll have to wait and see on that one. I, I think that break would be better for Sheffield United. I wouldn't have said that if it was nil-nil. I absolutely would have said it would have been best for Ange Postacoglu, but the fact that they somehow nicked that first goal, I think it's really important for Chris Wilder to say to his team, look, do not get your heads down. We've seen it so many times that... The one that springs to mind in particular, but there's many games throughout the season, was Newcastle, where they really did do a job on, on Newcastle, but they weren't clinical to score goals. 
Yet once they conceded, the heads go down. So Sheffield United have been the better side. Spurs are 1-0 up. I think this game still depends on how Sheffield United react to that because they haven't reacted very well this season when they have conceded the first goal. A Chelsea lead Bournemouth by a goal to nil. Moises Caicedo has put Chelsea into the lead from the halfway line, would you believe it? But Tottenham will beat Chelsea to finish fifth as it stands because, of course, Spurs lead here. Spurs only need a point to confirm Europa League football. There's a Tottenham player down on the far side of the field, but play goes on with Brennan Johnson. Back infield to Papsar. Now Romero just over the halfway line. About 10 yards into Sheffield United territory. Turns, pivots and rolls it back to Guglielmo Vicario, the goalkeeper. It was Son who'd gone down for Spurs. Play continues with Madison in the number 10 spot. Through to Kulosevsky. He's clear on goal. Saved by the goalkeeper. Kulosevsky should have found the opposite corner to which he found when he put Tottenham in front. It was a relatively simple chance. And in the end, a simple save for the goalkeeper following him will be one of those players leaving Sheffield United in the summer. I think you're being slightly harsh there, Joe. I, I, you know, you he's, he was on his right foot. He, he struck it well going for the, the far post. I think that's a really good save for Fodderingham. You know, he, he did get good pace on it. The precision was right. And that's a really good save. 2-0, absolutely Spurs finish fifth. Well, it's 1-0 here, but it's now 2 for Manchester City. And Phil Foden has got a second. Manchester City 2, West Ham United 0. And so Manchester City are cruising, it would seem, towards a fourth consecutive Premier League title. They knew that a win would be enough at the start of the afternoon, and that exactly is what is transpiring in the northwest. And Tottenham's afternoon, for those Spurs fans behind the goal, about 2,000 in the lower tier, away to our left, is just going to get better and better and better because Spurs lead and Arsenal are surely now going to be beaten to the Premier League title, Scott. It's win-win, isn't it, for Spurs at this moment in time? You cannot see City conceding two goals. And, you know, with Chelsea winning, it makes that strike from Kulusevski a really, really important one. Brentford nil, Newcastle won. Harvey Barnes has got the goal for Newcastle. That takes them a further clear of Manchester United in seventh place. Two points clear as it stands. Can I just say as well, Joe, obviously being ex-Chelsea, I want Chelsea to do as well as possible, and, and they are rivals, obviously, of Spurs, but... I believe Spurs absolutely deserve to finish fifth. I mean, you, you deserve, you finish where you deserve to be. And I do think they'll get the result, even before today, I thought they'd get the result needed. But I think the season they've had and, and the improvement that's happened in terms of watching the style of play, you know, the great start to the season, they were never going to keep that up. With the teams they played, I think it was always a bit of a false dawn in, in that sense. But... The way they've played throughout the whole season, they definitely deserve to finish fifth. Dragushin has won the full back for Spurs, midway inside his own half the field. And now Romero on the edge of his own penalty area. Romero takes a possession at walking pace, nobody putting him under any sort of pressure whatsoever. And it's Romero's crossfield ball. That's the left-hand side where Van der Ven is waiting. He teases it back to the feet of Dragushin. Lost five of their last six in the Premier League Spurs and only three wins in ten going further back. Their last away win was at Aston Villa in March where Spurs really appeared to have put themselves in command in terms of the race for the top four and you have to remember the start they had to the season as well. In the end it looks like being fifth for Tottenham. Manchester City are going to win the Premier League title as it stands. They'll finish four points clear of Arsenal. Here is Pedro Porro in a central position. On to Kulosevsky, edge of the D, curls it goalwards, blocked by Robinson, the Sheffield United captain. Now Pedro Porro, corner of the penalty area, 1-0 Tottenham lead. The loose ball drops for Johnson, who crosses, and he couldn't quite pick out James Madison in a crowded penalty box. Madison swung his right boot at it. Trusty managed to scramble it away, and actually since the goal, Tottenham are seeing much more possession now as Sheffield United win themselves a free kick midway inside their own half of the field. Yeah, you just wonder if, you know, the great start that Sheffield United had, the, the intensity that they played with, the way they put Spurs under pressure, both in midfield and in defence, hardly saw the ball in, in their own half, certainly not their own third. They needed to score that first goal. Spurs at this moment in time have weathered the storm. They got the, the first goal out of nothing. And now they're starting to be in a bit more control. Livingston nil, Hibbs 1, Motherwell nil, St Johnston 2. And Ross County won Aberdeen 2 in the Scottish Premiership earlier. Crawley booked their place in League 1 
for next season after a 2-0 win over Crewe at Wembley Stadium. Congratulations to Scott Lindsay. Congratulations to Scott Lindsay and Crawley Town. That was live on Talk Sport 2 earlier on. Arsenal nil, Everton nil live on Talk Sport right now. You can download the Talk Sport app if you want commentary from the Emirates Stadium. If you're a Tottenham fan, of course you won't want that. But it doesn't matter what Arsenal do at the moment because Manchester City's 2-0 lead over West Ham means they will have title glory again. And now Son has been fouled. Spurs have a free kick on the halfway line. And Scott, it does have an end-of-season feel about it all of a sudden here. Well, yeah, you know, what I would say is I think Sheffield United have not given up. They're still trying to play with passion. But now Spurs scored that goal. One, that's lifted them. And two, there's no doubt about it, it's taken the wind out the sails of Sheffield United. And Spurs are doing what they should have done even at 0-0 take control of the game, take the sting out of the game, pass the ball, and that's where you get that end-of-season feel. And obviously, it's down to Spurs now just to do this you know, for the rest of the 90 minutes and, and see that game out. We've got the effort here comes Pedro Porro trying to throw the ball through a middle. Good interception by Trusty on the slide to steer it out of play. Spurs throw near side down below us, about 10 yards into opposition territory. I think most of the pitch is still in brilliant sunshine. Sorry, Joe, I think also from a, from a personal point of view, you know, these Spurs players will be thinking, yeah, you know, we're, we're almost there. I, I really want to finish the season on the high individually, not just as a team. Madison has squeezed it left to Son, darting in field onto his right foot. Madison thought about taking aim, he's on the edge of the penalty area. Back out wide to the corner of the penalty area and Son again. Very crowded in that 18-yard box. Son trying to wriggle away from a sea of... Red and white striped shirts all around him. Papsar has to go back to the centre circle and Dragushin. Livingston 1, Hibs 1 is the latest score. And Ross County 2, Aberdeen 2 in the Scottish Premiership. Now the ball is with Lowe, the left wing back for Sheffield United, who's one of those players leaving the club in the summer, presented with a little memento before the game got off and underway. Tottenham are quick to win it back and Spurs still lead by a goal to nil. 27 minutes gone on Talk Sport 2 with now as Tottenham look for Son threading the ball down the left-hand side for Madison to find him, Son's blocked off it's Talk Sport 2 with now don't forget with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Man City against West Ham live right now, contract free with a now membership search now sports I think it's a big game for, for James Madison You know, I, I think he'll want to come out with figures like you know a goal and two assists to, to really put the pressure on Gareth Southgate to make sure that he is in the squad obviously he's gone now from 23 to 26 but we know the quality he has got there's no doubt about it the first part of the season he was in brilliant form one of if not the best player in the Premier League on current form since that injury he's not been quite the same player so again someone like him should be having that mentality of look we're against the worst side we've scored that first goal I need to dominate this game now He's going to take a corner on the far side. Madison, the number 10, with the bright orange boots on. Tottenham's first corner of the afternoon. They lead by a goal to nil. And it's at the cop end. I can see Chris Wilder down below is in conversation with his assistant, Alan Nil. Madison's right-footed in, swinging delivery into the six-sharp box. Thumping header up into the air, not very far by Robinson. Romero tried to flick it back to the edge of the box, and it's did off the post by Bentancur. And then Johnson picks up the loose ball, pulls it back to Son, who forces a good save by Fodderingham. Well, how did that stay out? Tottenham denied not once but twice. Bentancur thought he'd placed it to perfection. It hit the inside of the post, rolled along the line. Johnson teed it up for Son. His effort... Not particularly well placed, relatively simple push out for Fodderingham. As Tottenham go on the attack again, Romero turns it wide after an excellent cross from Pedro Porro. Three good chances in the space of 30 seconds for Spurs, who still lead 1 0. Yeah, three great chances within one, really. And it's a wonderful, I don't even use the word strike, it was pass from Benton Kerr through all the players. On the edge, from the edge of the box, it's hit the post. And where Kulusevski's shot hit the post and went in. Benton Kerr's shot hit the post, almost went behind Fodderingham, yet still didn't go in the goal or even come off the back of the backside of the, the goalkeeper. And then Pedro Porro, of course, had that chance or whipped in the ball for Romero. And I think if that's Son there, who obviously in between those two chances had his shot saved, I think he would have stuck the ball in the back of the net. Ominous for. Sheffield United and Tottenham lead 1-0 and as it stands they'll finish fifth they'd have to lose for Chelsea to be able to leapfrog them Chelsea are doing their bit beating Bournemouth 
by a goal to nil at Stamford Bridge, but none of that matters in the context of Europa League football at the moment. It's Spurs in front, and for the latest odds, head to William Hill, the official betting partner of TalkSport 2's Premier League coverage. Right now, Sheffield United at 11-1 to to come back and win. Spurs 1-5 to on, the draw at 11-2. to That's all thanks to William Hill. Get epic value all season with William Hill, 18+. plus. BeGambleAware.org. There is a slight nervousness for Tottenham when it comes to playing out from the defensive third, but they've worked their way over the halfway line quite impressively this time. And Johnson skipped infield to an inside right position. He's got the return ball back off Kudosevsky. And Brennan Johnson turns, plays it backwards towards the halfway line. Bentan Kaur, who was unlucky not to get a second a few moments ago. And now Spurs have possession with Pedro Porro again. Liverpool nil, Wolves nil at Anfield, but Wolves are down to 10 men. Nelson Semedo has been sent off, a straight red card. In what, of course, is Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge of Liverpool. What a storied career he's had at Anfield, and I'm sure there will be quite some reception for him today. As van der Ven miss hits across from the left-wing position, and it flies high over the top. And away to safety, Scott Minton. Yeah, it almost feels like Sheffield United have missed the boat by not scoring when they were on top in the first five, ten minutes. And no doubt about it. Spurs are, are taking control of this game now. That triple chance within 30 seconds. And you just get the feeling they have the confidence now to, to open Sheffield United up whenever they want. They, they're on the ball. They're dictating the tempo of the game. They're looking up when there's no pressure on them the movement up there it's interesting it's Son playing on the left and Kulusevski as the striker and just going forward I, I do feel that uh, on the left is Son's best position it's not really happened for Richarlison up front I think he's uh, someone who's again can come off the bench and do really well but if Spurs want to finish in the top four and maybe even do better to try and break into that top three at the moment they need a striker isn't that ironic, Scott, that as it stands, if Tottenham had beaten Manchester City on Tuesday night, they'd finish fourth and in those Champions League places because Aston Villa were a goal to nil down away at Crystal Palace. Well, Tottenham that, game, that, that game at Sellers Park was always going to be difficult for them. Always difficult. Mateta scored yet again. Saar steered the ball wide left to Tottenham and Son. Back in field to Madison. He's five yards from the edge of the penalty area. Rolls a lovely ball square to Pedro Porro, who can hit them and forces an excellent save from Fodderingham. One-handed diving to his right-hand side. You knew it was on, didn't you? For Pedro Porro from the angle, rifled it right-footed and Fodderingham with a good stop to turn it behind for a corner. 1-0 Spurs and will the floodgates start to open? Yeah, he's capable of that, isn't he? He's got a great strike on him. I saw him play quite a lot for Sporting. Absolutely bombs on, whips in, scores goals. He nearly got one there. The corner which Madison takes, again right-footed, right underneath the crossbar, well taken by Fodderingham, high above his head. He's had a tough time in goal this season, the Sheffield United keeper. But his clearance is great, and here is Archer, racing up the middle. Archer is through on goal, and he's rolled it wide. He completely mishit it. Did Cameron Archer, brilliant counter-attack from Sheffield United, started by their goalkeeper. It fell to Gus Harmer, who raced up the inside right channel, pulled it across for Cameron Archer. He surely had to score, but with only Vicario between him and the net, he dragged it horribly wide. I think the referee has given Sheffield United a corner here. Maybe Vicario got fingertips to that. But my goodness, that's a massive miss from Archer. Well, first of all, massive credit for Fodderingham. One for making the save, two making the catch, three pinging out what is a wonderful ball to Harmer. It's brilliant ability to see that Cameron Archer was free there. And you can just see the lack of confidence in a player, in a striker. The first touch wasn't very good. The second touch was even worse. It, therefore, it's on his left foot and it's under his feet. And he's not able to get a proper strike on it. Vicario clearly gets a little bit of a touch, but he was never going to score. And I think that shows, that sums up Sheffield United going forward. It really does. Another wonderful opportunity for them to score. There'll be a corner here for Sheffield United on the far side. Whipped in towards the near post, headed away by Dragushi. Brave header away by Dragushi for Sheffield United. And Spurs are looking to break upfield, but they can't do that effectively enough. Now then, our blaster was off the field momentarily there, but he's been allowed to come back onto the pitch. And uh, Sheffield United, meanwhile, having made the early change, Osborne had to go off the field and Vinnie Souza had to come onto the pitch for 
Sheffield United. They've got a little bit more threat at set plays, I think, with Vinny Souza up in the attack, Sheffield United. He's got that physicality and that aerial ability. He was standing in front of Vicario just a few moments ago. Yeah, but he's one of those players in terms of recruitment just, just hasn't been good enough this season. Uh, you know, the, the, the game's not decided. I just don't see United scoring two goals. Well, it's been cleared away by Sheffield United towards their left-back position. And Vinny Souza finding Max Lowe. A shame for Ben Osborne having to go off on the final day. Ahmed Hodzic for Sheffield United is midway inside his own half of the field. And he's darted up towards the halfway line. He gets the return ball from Brayton Diaz. Touches it on now quickly to Archer. Archer wriggling infield from the right-hand side. He's laid it to the left in Gus Harmer. Harmer onto his right foot. Big deflection of Pedro Porro. Another Sheffield United corner. They've had a couple of good spells in the game, have Sheffield United. It's 1-0 to Tottenham here. Less than 10 minutes remain in the first half. Liverpool lead at home to Wolves by a goal to nil. Alexis McAllister has scored against the 10 men in Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge. Manchester City are going to win the Premier League. They lead West Ham 2-0. Arsenal 0. Everton 0 is the latest score, but it doesn't matter what Arsenal do. Live on Talk Sport as it stands. Corner to Sheffield United. Whipped in left-footed towards the near post. Hit it away by Romero for as Spurs and then Kulosevsky's went it back on the corner of the penalty area and maybe Tottenham can counter-attack. Sheffield United wanted a free kick but they're not going to get it. Son is racing up the middle, hauled down by Vinny Souza. That'll be a yellow card at the lip of the centre circle. Son was clearly fouled there and the yellow straight out of the pocket of the referee. Well, it was an absolute yellow card. In fact, it was pretty much a rugby tackle. And Sheffield United and the fans feel that they should have had a free kick on the edge of the box. The referee said no. It ended up being what was a, a 4 v 3 And Vinny Souza was like, well, you can get past me, but... Well, the, you can get the ball past me, but you're not coming past me. Newcastle have got a second away at Brentford. Jacob Murphy has made it Brentford nil, Newcastle 2. Newcastle have hopes of finishing sixth, but they've got to win and hope Chelsea lose. Chelsea lead Bournemouth via Galton as it, as it stands. It'll be Tottenham fifth, Chelsea sixth and Newcastle seventh. Essentially, as you were at the start of the afternoon. Manchester United goalless away at Brighton and Hove Albion. United will finish eighth, which would be their lowest ever Premier League finish. Van der Venner steered the ball forward towards Son for Tottenham. Son back towards the halfway line and Bentancur. And in fact, hardly anyone has changed hands in terms of places on this final day. I think Palace and Bournemouth have swapped places. Other than that, it is as you were. And most significantly, another Premier League title on the way for Manchester City. Here come Tottenham, racing up the far side, the left, and the opportunity for Dragushin is in the area. He teased it across the edge of the box, cleared away by T uh, Trusty on the stretch, out towards the far side, the Tottenham left. Son has picked possession. Spurs lead by goal to nil. Infield towards James Madison, who was beaten to it by the tackle of Arblaster. Sheffield-born Oliver Arblaster, who was on loan at Port Vale earlier in the season before being brought into the team. Now Van der Ven. Angled ball out to the left-hand side and Son again. Infield from that far side, the John Street side of the ground. And now it's with Trakushin, his hair tied up in a ponytail. The Romanian stands on the halfway line. A square ball out to his immediate left and he gets it back from Ben Tancur. Tottenham have not been entirely in control of the game, but ultimately that won't matter too much to them. And they lead 1-0 on a day where only a point is required, absolutely. Do you know what? If we're, if we're looking at clear-cut chances, this should be about 4-3 to Sheffield United at the moment, <laughs> shouldn't it? They've certainly had their chances. Spurs have had theirs too. Sheffield United have won it back with Archer on the edge of the D. Blocked off by Romero. Romero's going to scramble this away for Tottenham up towards the halfway line. Another goal for Newcastle at Brentford. Alexander Isak has made it 3-0 for Newcastle United. That's a poor piece of control by Johnson in the right wing position. Out of play it goes. It'll be a throw to Sheffield United in their left wing position. Let's recap the scores for you around the grounds on the final day of the Premier League season. Manchester City 2, West Ham United 0, so City will win the title. Arsenal 0, Everton 0, live on Talk Sport right now. As it stands, it doesn't matter what Arsenal do. And they certainly won't win the title 
if they don't win today. Brentford nil, Newcastle three. Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. Burnley nil, Forest two. Chelsea lead Bournemouth by a goal to nil. Crystal Palace two, Aston Villa nil now. A second for Jean-Philippe Mateta. What an extraordinary run he's on. Liverpool won, 10-man Wolves nil. Luton nil, Fulham nil. Luton heading for mathematical confirmation of their relegation. And Spurs lead at Sheffield United here, one nil. Five minutes of the first half to go in a game that has ebbed and flowed. And would you believe it, Arsenal nil, Everton won. Idrissa Gay has given Everton the lead and Arsenal's final day really does go from bad to worse. Manchester City are winning and that alone will give City the Premier League title. But on a day where Arsenal had to win to stand any chance, they are losing. And the Tottenham fans are absolutely jubilant away to the left. That's about as loud as we heard them when the goal went in. <laughs> as soon as you said that, I looked to the left and they hadn't heard that. So I was just staring at them and suddenly they're all just jumping up and down now. Look, I still feel Arsenal will come back and win, but I do think it's a bit irrelevant because City will get the job done. But I suppose fans would absolutely love that, wouldn't they? Not only Arsenal not win the title, but lose and Spurs win and finish fifth. So at the end of it, there would be a, a five-point gap between Arsenal and Manchester City, ultimately. And it will be congratulations to Pep Guardiola. But there are still over 45 minutes of the season to go. You, you can never be totally sure in football, but I think we're as pretty sure as we've ever been, Scott Minto, that the title is, here, is staying at the Etihad. Yeah, look, I, I genuinely think Arsenal can come back and win that game, but there's no way City are letting that go, 2-0. And, and they got goals early as well, didn't they? Tottenham lead 1-0 here at Sheffield United. Here goes Van der Ven, charging upfield down the far side, the left. He's been excellent, the Dutchman. He really has had a very good season. £43 million in the summer from Wolfsburg. And that, in, in some senses, in the context of the Premier League and transfer fees nowadays, looks like something of a... A bargain as Van der Ven is clattered into by Brayton Diaz. That'll be a free kick to Spurs on the left no, side. He'd, he'd be up there in terms of candidates for, for you know team of the season in the Premier League, without a doubt. You know, you, you, you probably would put Saliba in there. You may put Van Dijk. You may put Gabriel. Absolutely, Van der Ven would be in with the shell. I think he's been sensational. I think when he got injured after that really good run, that's when it, it started to go badly. He got injured in that Chelsea game and was out for a period of time. But no, and the fact that he's showing you how versatile he is, that he can play left-back as well, I think he's been a brilliant buy. Tottenham free kick has come to nothing. It has been quite an error-strewn display from Spurs at times. I don't think Ange Postecoglou would rate it particularly highly. Standing as he is on the edge of his technical area now, hands in pockets. He made the best start after 10 games by any manager to their Premier League managerial career. Remember, Spurs had... 26 points from their first 10 games and Spurs have been top of the Premier League for 26 nights this season. Yeah. All of that earlier in the campaign. I, I, I still think that was a, a massive overachievement and if you look at the teams they played against, you know, the three promoted sides, the Bournemouth and Palace side that were still finding themselves at the beginning of the season, got lucky against Liverpool with that horrendous VAR decision. Played really well against Arsenal. That was a very good point there, but I think the fixtures were kind to them. Liverpool lead 10-man Wolves by two goals to nil now. Jarrell Kwanza has got a second for Liverpool. Another Premier League goal for the youngster, having scored away at Aston Villa of late. And so Jurgen Klopp is getting a fond farewell at Anfield. In what is his 491st and last game in charge of Liverpool, of course, we expect Arna Slot to take over. Arsenal have got an equaliser. Arsenal won. Everton won. Takahiro Tomiyasu with a, a very rare goal. I, that is an extraordinary, extraordinarily rare goal for Tomiyasu in the Premier League. So 1-1 one, one at the Emirates. That's live right now on TalkSport. If you want to listen to that, best to download the TalkSport app and you can swipe between both stations at your leisure. But Arsenal have to hope that not only they win their game, Arsenal must win to have any chance, but they would need Manchester City to concede twice against West Ham. The only way that Arsenal win the league is if they win and Manchester City fail to win. But it's City 2, West Ham nil, still at the Etihad. We'll be into five minutes added time at Bramall Lane very shortly. 
Lots of replica shirts on show around the ground today and Spurs knocking the ball about nicely, leading 1-0. I was just waiting for the boos to come out from the Tottenham fans. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't even responded to it. Well, I think whatever happens, there will be a delight, I am sure, among the Spurs supporters if Arsenal fail to win the title. Absolutely. But, but you know, what I would say about Spurs, you know, you, you still have to win those games early on, and they did. And yes... You know, since then, the, the results have been not good at all. But you, you're judged over a whole season. The thing for me is the trend, and the trend from a, a fantastic start to, you know, losing games and having injuries and not being able to deal with those injuries. I think Van der Ven is a big blow whenever he's not playing. Romero too, or Doggy as well. The scene about how difficult it is to replace him at left back, and Van der Ven is doing a very good job of it. But then he's out of that centre back position. Spurs needs investment. And Tottenham are racing clear now. Opportunity for Son on the edge of the D. Son wriggles away. Through to James Madison. Saved by the goalkeeper. Sprawling stop by Fodderingham at his feet. Now it's dropped towards Son. He's about five yards from the edge of the D. Son in a central position. Between three, four Sheffield United shirts. The loose ball is deflected away. Into the path of Kulosevsky. Inside right. Towards Johnson. His shot from the angle is turned behind by the sliding Max Lowe. And it's out of play now for another Tottenham corner. Luton nil, Fulham one. Luton heading down out of the Premier League. And it's Manchester City 2, West Ham United 1. Mohamed Kudus has got West Ham back into the game. So a West Ham equaliser coupled with a second Arsenal goal to turn the game around against Everton would take the title to North London. That's how close potentially this Premier League season still is. Would you believe it? Oh, that would make Could it happen? Wouldn't it? James Madison taking the corner, but he knows he should be making it 2-0 here. That was a wonderful opportunity. Cop end. Madison out swinging, headed away. It'll drop down to Kulosevsky. He's brought it down neatly, stood it wide to Madison on the near side, the right. Twists and turns of the final day in the Premier League. And maybe the title race isn't quite done just yet. Not as many people would have thought when Manchester City took a commanding lead so early on. Arsenal have gone behind, but they've got themselves level. Arsenal must win to have any chance. Manchester City still lead 2-1, so they're OK for now. But if West Ham score again, Arsenal will take pole position. Spurs in command of the race for fifth. They'll be taking that ahead of Chelsea. Madison through the middle towards Romero, who'd stayed up after the corner. Ahmed Hodzic comes across to win it back, and there was a foul, or a judge to have been a foul. A Romero on Bogle, I think it is, he's gone down, and that's a Sheffield United free kick. I know what Spurs fans want. They want an equaliser <laughs> at the Etihad and an Arsenal not to beat Everton. <laughs> That's what they want. What They want it handed to them on a silver platter and they still don't take yeah, the chance. Yeah, look, you know, I've got no skin in the game here, but I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't be unhappy if at the end of the game it was a draw with uh, Manchester City, but actually Arsenal could have done it with a win, but didn't. We've got the FA Cup final and the Championship playoff final live for you both from Wembley next weekend, the Europa League final on Wednesday evening. Sheffield United nil, Tottenham won in a game where we should have seen more goals, really. Should Three be 4-4, four four, by the way, now. Should be, with that Madison chance, should be 4-4. Four four. Should, should that, be. In terms of clear-cut chances. 1-0 to Tottenham. Spurs keeping a rare clean sheet in the Premier League as it stands. We have just over 90 seconds of added time to go. We would talk sport two with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, they've got a van. Fodderingham's clearance, high up towards the left wing, nodded infield by Lowe, blocked off by Romero towards the Spurs right back position. The assistant has put his flag up, that chequered flag on the near side to signal that it is a Sheffield United throw, midway inside at Tottenham territory. Luton won, Fulham won, quick equaliser for Luton after Adama Traore had put Fulham in front. Carlton Morris has levelled the match. And half time started to come in as well. We'll bring you those uh, a full check in just a few moments. But right at the end of first half stoppage time, as Sheffield United have a player go down in the area, and our blaster's not happy with Romero, and Dragushin gets involved as well. The referee might have to come across and just put a stop to all that. Trusty's gone down, or at least crouched down inside the six sharp box. He, well, he just threw himself to ground, really. I mean, there was a shove from Vicario, yes, but he, he didn't need to really go to ground like that. He's stronger than that, surely. Austin Trusty is a big centre half. It's embarrassing. That's what it is. Big centre half like that going down, trying to win a penalty. You know, in the days of VAR now, you, 
even if it was given, it's going to get overturned, but it never was going to be given. Fulham lead at Luton again. Raul Jimenez has put them 2-1 up. 1-0 to Tottenham here. Defending a throw right at the end of the half. There's still a delay to this throw. Lots of tangling going on in and around that six-yard line. Trusty and Dragushin again. The referee's keeping a very clear eye on that. Last few seconds of the five added, and the Sheffield United fans out of their seats as the throw comes into the box. Here comes Vicario. He's patted it down. He's gathered the ball, and the boos from the home supporters who feel there was too much in that from Dragushin on Trusty. They feel they should have had a penalty, but the whistle will go here for half time. Tottenham lead 1 0, and Spurs, as it stands, are doing more than enough in the race for fifth place in the Premier League. Chelsea are doing their bit, beating Bournemouth by a goal to nil, but that doesn't matter as it stands. Tottenham only need a point to get the job done, and they're 1-0 up, courtesy of Dejan Kulusevski. That barely, though, tells the story of quite a chaotic first half at times, Scott Minter, because Spurs have had chances to further their lead, but Sheffield United have had big opportunities as well. Well, before Kulusevski got the goal, Sheffield United could have been two, perhaps even three nil up. You know, certainly very, very good chances, two of them from Brereton Diaz. Once Kulusevski got the goal, you know, almost you could see United being deflated and Tottenham able to control the tempo of the game. And they had a couple of really good chances after that, which I think Fodderingham has probably been man of the match so far, made some really good saves. But then Sheffield United, you know, picked up again and created a couple more chances. I genuinely think this could easily be a 4-4 game. But at the moment, it's only Kulusevski who's ended up being clinical. Well, the goal was taken well by Kulusevski in off the post at a point, Scott, where Tottenham have been on the back foot in the early stages. It, it didn't feel like Spurs had anything to play for it at portions in that first half. No, I, I, you know, I'm not making excuses for Spurs, but I, I genuinely think from a, a Sheffield United point of view, the pressure's completely off now. It's a beautiful day. They've had all the bad records, the, the Premier League records, the, the ones that they didn't want. And actually now they just want to try and perform as much as they possibly can in front of their home fans before they get relegated. So actually in terms of timing, even though they've lost the last six and haven't won in 13 and got the poor defensive record and no clean sheet in 21, they absolutely went for it in the start and, and Tottenham weren't ready for it. As I say, they could easily have been one or 2-0 down before Kulusevski got that goal. And I think if Brereton Diaz had his time again or be lying in the, with his head on the pillow tonight thinking, how on earth did I not score early on? The game could be very, very different, but as it stands, it's been a game full of chances, but just the one goal. Half-time's coming in around the grounds, around the Premier League on the final day of the season, live on Talk Sport 2. We'll recap them in full in just a few moments, but as it stands, Manchester City will win the Premier League title and Tottenham will beat Chelsea to fifth spot and Europa League football next season. At the break at Bramall Lane, it's Sheffield United nil, Tottenham Hots for what? TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the EFL. Game day exclusive on TalkSport 2 with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Man City versus West Ham. Live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports, 18 plus, screen our internet, terms apply. Hope there won't be any VAR delays today. <laughs> Heard that rumour about their state... Can't wait to see what the pundits make of that booking. Looking forward to the match report on this one. When it comes to football, never miss a story. Get the best news, opinion, interviews and gossip at thesun.co.uk. For the football lowdown every day, it's thesun.co.uk. McDonald's are making small improvements to our classic burgers, searing our 100% British and Irish beef patties so they're even juicier. And we're serving them hotter for meltier cheese. All in new toastier buns. The classics. Now a little more. Mmm. Comparison with prior classic burgers. Served after 11am, subject to availability. <laughs> we all fantasise about our perfect home. Sipping a morning coffee out on the terrace. Good morning, Mr Squirrel. Morning. The kids building a treehouse in the garden. I'm living my perfect childhood. But come on. This isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Ooh. 
you're a hustler, boy. <laughs> you know me. I just eat my KFC with free popcorn chicken every Friday. You mean we just eat? Whoa. Find your own deal, Nicholas. That's cold. Come on, man. One bite. Get Friday freebies from McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Express and Local Wheats for freebie Fridays and everything else. Did somebody say just eat? Subject to availability and serving times. Participate in stores. Check free item and required minimum spend on the store page. Fridays only. Brands and free items may vary weekly. See justeat.co.uk for details. Whether you're levelling or landscaping, get the job done with Big Spring offers on trade essentials at Screwfix. Save £10 on the four-piece Magnuson Spirit Level set, now just £39.99. And tackle those lawns with the Titan Electric Lawn Mower, now only $119.99, a saving of £10. Shop Spring offers now on the app at screwfix.com or in-store. Delivery fees may apply. Price is valid until at least June 2nd. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. Game day exclusive on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Rent from the best lineup in the UK. Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. The UEFA Europa League final. Live on TalkSport 2. Oh! This Wednesday night from 7. Atalanta versus Bayer Leverkusen. Unbelievable. Kick off 8 p.m. The UEFA Europa League final. Live on TalkSport 2. And here they come. What a magnificent sight. Yes, it's live British horse racing on the radio and TalkSport 2 have got it covered. Wednesday afternoon from 1. TalkSport 2 will bring you full coverage and live race commentary of all the action. Direct from Yarmouth. Saddle up for live British horse racing on the radio. Down Download the TalkSport app and swipe left. Or ask your smart speaker to play TalkSport 2 to follow all the action. Wednesday afternoon from 1 on TalkSport 2. Pushing the apex of live football. Right foot shot, brilliant goal! Game day. Winner of best sports coverage in the 2024 Radio Academy Aria Awards. Game day exclusive. On TalkSport 2. You with Talk Sport 2 live from Bramall Lane. This is Joe Shannon, former Chelsea defender Scott Minto with me for commentary here. Sheffield United nil, Spurs won at half time, so Tottenham will finish in fifth in that Europa League spot come the end of the season as it stands elsewhere in the Premier League. The half time scores Manchester City 2, West Ham United 1. So City, as it stands, will win the Premier League title. Arsenal 1, Everton 1 is a half time score. Live over on Talk Sport, the Gunners and Mikel Arteta will miss out again as it stands, though it is potentially on a knife edge if Arsenal were to score a second and go in front and Manchester City were to concede a second and draw level with West Ham United, then Arsenal would go top. So two goals, one at either stadium, could potentially change the title picture, but at the moment it's Manchester City and Pep Guardiola in the driving seat for a fourth straight Premier League title. Elsewhere, Brentford nil, Newcastle three. Newcastle will finish seventh as it stands above Manchester United. Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. United in the FA Cup final against Manchester City next Saturday. That's live from Wembley on Talk Sports. Burnley nil, Nottingham Forest two. Forest making mathematical certainty of survival as it stands, though of course it was all really pretty much dealt with before we got off and underway today. Chelsea won Bournemouth nil, so Chelsea will finish fifth, uh, sixth rather, sixth as it stands. They won't be able to overtake Tottenham. Chelsea lead Bournemouth by a goal to nil and in sixth position. Liverpool two, Wolves nil, two for Liverpool against ten-man Wolves on Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge. Crystal Palace lead Aston Villa by two goals to nil and as it stands, they're going to finish in the top ten of the Premier League. Two, another two for Jean-Philippe Mateta today. Luton 1, Fulham 2 is the latest score elsewhere in the Premier League. So Luton's uh, relegation set to be mathematically confirmed this afternoon. We knew it was going to be the case really before the game, but confirmation about to arrive. In the Scottish Premiership, these are full-time scores. Livingston 1, Hibs 1 is a full-time score. Motherwell 1, St Johnston 2. And deep into stoppage time in the game between Ross County and Aberdeen. That one level at 2 goals apiece. Second half commentary from Bramall Lane to come shortly, but what a day for Crawley Town, promoted to League One after a 2-0 victory over Crewe at Wembley Stadium, live here in the playoff final in League Two on TalkSport 2, and the Crawley boss Scott Lindsay has been speaking to our man Ian Abrahams. We're unbelievable today. Um, the players have been different class all season, if I'm honest with you. They've taken on a lot of information 
and executed it nearly spot on every week. Today, you know, in, on the big stage, you know, they, they, they executed it again really well. They, you know, listen, they were outstanding. I've got to be honest with you, the players won this game, not me. You're very kind and humble in saying that, but you were favourites to get out of this league at the beginning of the season, and you've done it. The only thing is, it's not the way everyone thought you were going to do it. Yeah, exactly right, yeah. No, we're favourites to go down, and, you know, we use that as fuel to feed us, um, to fuel the players. And we knew, because of the hard work that we we do on the training ground, the culture that we've set, we knew that we'd, we'd be nowhere near that. In fact, we knew that we'd, we'd have half a chance of doing something really special. Um, and the players just believed in it all the time. And, of course, we've done that now. So I'm really proud of the players. I'm proud of everybody who's connected to the club, the backroom staff, the staff, the football staff, everybody. Outstanding. Not all your players are non-league players, but when you think of Lodos who's come through, you walk from Oxford City, I know Danilo Orsi well, and from Thurrock and Hungerford and Borenwood and I mean nowhere near a league club until he was what 26. Lawrence Maguire you brought him from Chesterfield. This is a, a terrific sort of bunch of players, but a talented bunch that proves you don't have to have a load of money to spend. No, we had nine players in the squad today. It was playing non-league football this time last year, nine. Um, so, you know, they're out there. Them, they're gem, them gems are out there. you just got to find them. And then when you find them, you've got to work out with them to improve them and to make sure that they become good professionals, um, which they have. They've been outstanding. Two more. First of all, someone said to me earlier in the season about you, you have plan A and then plan B is do plan A better. Yeah, I'm very much on that. We, we play a certain way, which you saw... To, uh, today um, we play that we play like that all the time um, sometimes we don't quite get it right because that's football um, if we don't we never change we never go to plan B plan B is plan A but better finally how do you celebrate um, we're going to go for an after party now with everybody or people connected to the football club and enjoy enjoy tonight um, and then go away and have a good holiday with my with my family that's the Crawley boss, Scott Lindsay. Congratulations to them after their promotion to League One today. 2-0 winners over Crewe in the League Two playoff final. Live on TalkSport 2. And commentary here from Bramall Lane with Tottenham leading Sheffield United by a goal to nil. Plus goals as they go in from the final day of the Premier League season. Continues next. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the EFL. Game day exclusive on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Whatever the mission, home or away, Enterprise helps over 120,000 people every day. Whether you're drilling or decorating, get the job done with Big Spring offers on trade essentials at Screwfix. Upgrade your kit and save £10 on the DeWalt Brushless Cordless Combi Drill, now only $159.99. And get rolling on those paint jobs with two for £26 on 10-litre Fortress Trade Contract Matte Paint. Shop Spring Offers now on the app at screwfix.com or in-store. Delivery fees may apply. Price is valid until at least June 2nd. Subject to availability. See screwfix.com for full T's and C's. McDonald's are making small improvements to our classic burgers, searing our 100% British and Irish beef patties so they're even juicier. And we're serving them hotter for meltier cheese, all in new toastier buns. The classics. Now a little more. Mmm. Comparison with prior classic burgers. Served after 11am. Subject to availability. <laughs> Who are you going for in the racing today? The favourite. And tomorrow? The favourite. And the next day? The favourite. The Suns horse racing pullout. The favourite is now in the paper seven days a week. Yes, that's right. Every single day. Bringing you even more top tips, more form guides, more race cards and all the colours and silks. Get your favourite pullout every day in the sun. The home of racing. When the kids eat us out of house and home, we just eat groceries from Sainsbury's. <laughs> when do they leave home? Get Sainsbury's Asda and Co-op delivered for free. For groceries and everything else. Did somebody say just eat? Participate in stores. A minimum spend applies. Other charges apply. Subject to availability. See justeat.co.uk for details. We all fantasise about our perfect home. Watching the big game cosied up in the snug. Balmy summer nights with the kids playing on the lawn. We're playing around my football! 
but come on, this isn't real. Listen, if you're serious about making your fantasy a reality, find out what your home is worth instantly with a free online valuation estimate. Get real about moving. Get on the market. Most common time to obtain an online quote between 1st of June 2022 and 30th of September 2022 is under three minutes. Excludes Northern Ireland. Game day exclusive on TalkSport 2 with now. Stream all the Sky Sports action like Chelsea versus Bournemouth. Live today, contract free with a Now Sports membership. Search Now Sports 18 plus, stream our internet, terms apply. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the English Football League. You're with TalkSport 2, live from Bramall Lane on the final day of the Premier League season. Tottenham lead Sheffield United by a goal to nil and will finish fifth and in the Europa League spot as it stands above their rivals, Chelsea. I'm Joe Shannon, Scott Minto, former Chelsea defender, is alongside me. And we will get back off and underway for the second half in just a few moments as the referee takes the field again in the bright sunshine. Sheffield United in the red and white striped shirts, black shorts and black socks. And Spurs in the dark blue shirts, dark blue shorts and white socks. Sheffield United playing from left to right towards the massive cop end away to our right in the second half. And Spurs from right to left towards that west end of the stadium where the Spurs fans are gathered in the lower tier. And Sheffield United have kicked the second half off. Back it goes, Archer to Fotheringham, the goalkeeper. And Fotheringham will hoist the ball high downfield and up the middle bright sunshine here what a lovely day in south yorkshire as is the case all around the country on a day where manchester city as it stands will win the premier league title tottenham will finish fifth chelsea sixth newcastle seventh and manchester united would finish eighth their lowest ever premier league finish and liverpool two nil up on 10 man wolves to give jürgen klopp a perfect send off at anfield as Tottenham go long up the middle towards Kulusevski, out comes Fodderingham to smack it clear, left-footed into the stand on the far side for a Tottenham throw. And Luton's relegation will be officially confirmed today. They trail at home to Fulham. Nottingham Forest lead Burnley 2-0. And really, we knew before the game that Luton effectively were already down. No changes at half-time for either team, it doesn't look like. So Sheffield United, Fodderingham is the goalkeeper. Ahmed Hodzic... Trusty and Robinson are the centre halves with Lowe and Bogle acting as the wing backs. Vinny Souza are Blaster and Harmer in midfield. Archer and Breton Diaz are the front two. Tottenham with Vicario in goal. Pedro Porro, Romero, Dragushin and Van der Ven, who's got that tremendous pace looking to burst upfield here on the near side of the left, but he's fouled. Bogle. And that'll be a free kick to Sheffield United. The Spurs midfield comprising of Bentancourt sitting deepest with Saar and Madison getting further forward and Son and Johnson either side of Dejan Kulusevski. I'll give you the two sets of subs as well for Spurs. Austin, Whiteman, the two goalkeepers, Skip, Hoybier, Gill, Royale, Scarlett, Moore and Donnelly. And for Sheffield United, Davis the goalkeeper, Brewster, McBurney, LaRussi, McAtee, Holgate, Brooks and Dan Jebison. 16 points, three wins all season for already relegated Sheffield United. But Harmer has sent Archer Ray and he shrugged aside Romero and then was denied by the legs of Vicario before eventually, belatedly, the offside flag went up. But Archer really did get the better of Romero in that physical tussle there. Two minutes into the second half, Sheffield United nil, Tottenham Hotspur one, so Spurs will finish fifth. Alongside me is Scott Minter. Yeah, actually, Cameron Archer, not happened for him this season, has it, for no. Sheffield United? But he, he was just offside. It was a very good decision uh, by the referee's assistant. But what, what would have impressed Chris Wilder, I'm sure, was that the strength he showed to hold off Romero. And he got the shot in. It didn't go in the back of the net. It was a good save from Vicari, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway because he was offside. But at least that will give him a little bit more confidence as well. Had a couple of chances in the first half, didn't he? Which just showed the complete lack of confidence that he's got with the touches he had and didn't give a chance himself a chance to get in the good position to score and we'll see if they can start as they did in the first half Sheffield United well both teams hit the post in that first half Brayton Diaz for Sheffield United and then later Bentancourt for Spurs both goalkeepers made decent saves and actually Archer really should have scored in the first half yeah. when he went clear on goal but screwed his shot wide. Absolutely, and that, that was the, the moment I was thinking about. The first touch was bad, the second touch was even worse and gave his 
third uh, touch, the, the left foot, no chance whatsoever to score past Vicario. Spurs, sorry, Spurs just need to be careful, though. They need to make sure they don't start the second half like they did the first. They're in control of this game at 1-0. They know they can, they've created chances. They can score the second goal. If Sheffield United get the next one, it just makes them nervy in terms of finding that point. That's all they need here. And then uh, you get the crowd, the psychology all changes and suddenly Sheffield United become a different side. Well, you're right, Scott. It's 72 Premier League goals now for Spurs this season. The third most that they've ever scored in a Premier League campaign. We know they've been very entertaining to watch. The problem has often been conceding too many at the other end. Chelsea 2, Bob McNeil. Raheem Sterling has got Chelsea a second at Stamford Bridge. So they're doing their bit in the race for fifth, but it doesn't matter at the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely, it doesn't matter at the moment. But if Sheffield United get the next goal, the whole complexion changes. Spurs cannot come to Bramall Lane and not come away with at least something. At the moment, they're in control. Chelsea are doing their job. Spurs need to do theirs. They say 1-0 is very comfortable. 1-1. The, the whole crowd here will get behind Sheffield United. Yeah, that's it. Spurs only need a point to guarantee Europa League football for next season after missing out on Europe this year. The ball is with Vicario, all in bright yellow, to feed Romero midway inside his own half the field. Brentford 1, Newcastle 3. Vitaly Janelt has got Brentford potentially back into that game. Luton 1, Fulham 3. Third for Fulham at Kenilworth Road. Raul Jimenez with his second of the game. Pedro Porro, high cross field ball to the back post. He's picked out Son in the shade in front of the Tottenham fans. All on their feet, many in white shirts behind the goal. Given away by Pap Sarr. Blocked off was Son by Ahmed Hodzic, but Son has won it back off him. He's tearing along the edge of the 18-yard line. He's laid it square to Pedro Porro. Four to Johnson. Angle very tight, held up by Lowe. Back he goes to Pedro Porro again. It'll squirm through the legs of the defender to the feet of Kuro, um, Bentancourt. Bentancourt square to Saar. Ten yards from the corner of the penalty area. Quickly on to Son. Infield to Madison, the number 10. Back inside to Saar again. Now Madison midway inside the Sheffield United half. Sheffield United defending relatively diligently, actually, throughout this game. Even while Spurs have opened them up on a couple of occasions. And Sheffield United have had a bit of luck. But actually, I think they deserve to still be in the game at this moment. Here is Johnson trying to tear away down the Tottenham right. He's been ineffective again today. Blocked off by Lowe. Throw to Sheffield United. Six minutes into the second half and Spurs lead 1-0. Albeit, Bournemouth have a goal back against Scott's old club Chelsea. Chelsea okay. 2, Bournemouth 1 own goal from Benoit Badiashu. No, you just mentioned about Brennan Johnson. He's been ineffective. And I... I don't think he's shown that he can be first team next season. I personally think if Spurs are going to try and go for that top four, you know, that I talked about needing a striker. Maybe that year is experience playing for a club like Spurs that he'll get better. But at what we've seen so far this season, is, as I say, if Spurs are going for Champions League, he needs to step up or they need to get maybe someone else in that position. Well, Spurs have managed to work the ball out towards the near side the left wing position it's out of play for a Sheffield United throw we're right at the back of the main stand a very steep drop to the touchline below about 30 40 rows of seats it's a fine ground this Bramall Lane albeit there are empty seats today quite a few actually particularly way to the left hand side in the upper tier above the Tottenham fans the away end is the away section is packed but the home supporters above them there are lots of empty red seats around them as Son wins Tottenham a corner off Vinny Souza. Yeah, good play from Son. I just feel he's more comfortable out on the left and able to run with pace on his right foot. He's capable of going either way. Very different being that striker with your back to play. You know, you're expecting Brennan Johnson to step up a little bit and you know, get a striker, maybe a centre midfielder, and also maybe a backup left back and, and goalkeeper. And then you know, Spurs are chasing top four then. Plenty forward for Tottenham here, including both Dragushin. And Romero, whipped in by Madison from the corner, high and deep to the back post, and way over hits, it'll trickle apologetically out of play for a goal kick to Sheffield United. 1-0 Tottenham lead here, live on TalkSport 2. Over on TalkSport, it remains Arsenal 1, Everton 1. So Arsenal would miss out on the Premier League title as it stands, even if Manchester City were to be pegged back again by... West Ham United, but City still lead 2-1. So whatever happens at the moment, with Manchester City winning, the title will be going to Pep Guardiola and the Etihad for a fourth straight season, Scott. I bet they're nervy, though, right now. 2-0, oh. especially the goals coming very early. They perhaps would have thought it would be 3-4, and four, maybe even 5. 2-1 on half-time, and what a strike it was, and Kudus. 
I'll tell you what, definitely squeaky bum time. Well, they don't always do it easily, do they, Manchester City? QPR, Aston Villa, where they had to come from 2-0 down. Brighton. Brighton, they went a goal down, I think, didn't they? When Liverpool were the chasers. Vicario's clearance away from his own goal for Spurs. 1-0 up. Sheffield United may be thinking about changes. Chris Wilder standing in the sun in his technical area, watching on as his team come forward. Our blaster plays the ball infield from the right up the middle, and then it's collected by Trebuchet, and Archer is offside, coming back from an offside position anyway. Sheffield United fans in front of us, not entirely happy, but it doesn't matter. It's a free kick anyway to Tottenham. Wednesday evening, we'll bring you the Europa League final on TalkSport 2 between Atalanta and brilliant Bayer Leverkusen. Next Saturday, the FA Cup final is live with us from Wembley on TalkSport. And then on Sunday on TalkSport, the Championship playoff final. Always a great occasion. Leeds against Southampton for a place in the Premier League next season. Make sure you download the TalkSport app to follow everything. You can swipe between both stations at your leisure. So no change in the all-important scores as far as the title race is concerned so far in the second half. And no change here at Bramall Lane either, where Spurs are leading 1-0, not completely comfortable yet. Bogle has gone in on the goalkeeper, Vicario. He was closing Vicario down, and Vicario wanted the back pass from Dragushin. There was a little bit of contact, Bogle, on the goalkeeper, but really, did Vicario need to go to ground there? Throw himself to ground like he did, Scott? Spinning? to ground well I'd give him a 5.9 for that because that was a <laughs> quite good little half twist with a pike I mean look he's definitely made contact with him Bogle there's also for sure the car is trying to make the most of it what an end to the season for Crystal Palace 3-0 up now against Aston Villa who'll be playing Champions League football next season for the first time since the early 80s Fair, I, Chiesa has made it 3 I, I think that game was always going to be difficult with how well Palace are playing. I, I wonder yep. if they're sober still, the, the, the Villa players. <laughs> the more amazing celebrations in the week when Tottenham lost at Manchester City and so Villa's passage to confirm fourth was confirmed. That would have been some celebration. Spurs over the halfway line, far side, right to left in the second half, in their change kit today. So the dark blue shirts of Tottenham Hotspur. Luton 2, Fulham 3. Alfie Doughty gets a second for Luton who have acquitted themselves relatively well in the Premier League, I think, this year. But, of course, all three promoted clubs are going straight back down. Sheffield United have been such a huge disappointment, though they lost so many players in the summer transfer window who were key to their fortunes last season. So, in a way, Paul Hecking bottom before Chris Wilder and then Wilder since they were on a hiding to nothing. Booze for the home fans for Vicario as he gets the ball. He's back on his feet and he gets another pass from Dragushi. Vicario clips the ball calmly, right-footed out to the right-back position. Tottenham 1-0 up, 11 minutes into the second half. Early ball through the middle by Pedro Porro to find Kulosevsky. Right on edge of the penalty area, Johnson and Son up with him. Kulosevsky darts towards the dead ball line, cuts it back towards Johnson. He had to make that header. I think it was Vinny Souza tracking back to nod it behind for a Tottenham corner. Yeah, good play from Kulosevsky. As I say, he's playing as that kind of number nine. He finds the channel, he got a one-on-one -on -one down the right-hand side getting just inside the box, shaped to come inside, went outside, and he's whipped the ball in. And that was very good defending from Souza. Talk Sport bringing you all, all the action from the final day at the Emirates. A reminder, an Arsenal goal, coupled with the West, a West Ham equaliser at Manchester City, if that were to arrive, would take the title to Arsenal. But it's not happening at the moment. Corner for Tottenham, Madison in towards van der Ven, headed away. And Dragushin was up there as well. Swept further clear by Bogle. Scott Minton. You're teasing the Spurs fans and not in yeah. a good way, aren't you? <laughs> well, it looked so comfortable at one point. Good work, Madison. Just jinking away neatly there on the far side, the left from Lowe, who was trailing in his wake. And that'll be a free kick to Spurs. On the far side, midway into opposition territory. That, that's what Arsenal are hoping for now. They're hoping for a favour from West Ham to make it 2-2. And then if they can score, unbelievably, Mikel Arteta's side would overtake Manchester City to win the league. You said it earlier, these are two goals away from being... I mean, it was called a miracle, wasn't it, if they were to somehow find a way to win the title, Arsenal. You know, just two goals away from that miracle. I think especially given the way that the games panned out early on today. Remember, City were 2-0 up at one stage and Arsenal were 1-0 down. Absolutely. 1-0 to Tottenham here with Dragushi 
in possession, in the centre circle, out to van der Ven, good close control by van der Ven, he quickly shovels it left to Son, Son is marauding infield from the left-hand side, checks back and finds van der Ven again, Sheffield United sitting actually with quite a disciplined shape for a team that have conceded over a century of Premier League goals this year. 8-9 behind the ball, but Son has wriggled beyond Jaden Bogle, dead ball line, he pulls it back, Madison with the chance, and he might get a second opportunity, it could come for van der Ven, saved by the goalkeeper, brilliant arm, and now Porro rifles it into the top corner, and there's surely no doubt about it now, it'll be Tottenham who get Europa League football, and fifth spot, Pedro Porro rifle it home with a plum, he almost burst the net, and Sheffield United, the relegated side, beaten down here by the sheer pace of that Pedro Porro screamer. Sheffield United nil, Tottenham Hotspur 2. Well, I'll tell you what, the second half hasn't quite lived up to how it was in the first half in terms of chances created, but that is good play, first of all, from Son. It's poor defending from Bogle, you have to say. Madison's shot is blocked, it's a wonderful tackle. Fottingham gets another save, he tips it wide, but the ball is just kept in play and the ball was played back to Porro again we saw his fantastic strike in the first half where Fodringham made a great save but he's getting nowhere near that one at all the ball laid back to him first time strike and it's got, you know, it's all about pace and power, he's actually gone above Fodringham but he can't move quick enough just to tip it over wonderful strike you have to say I don't necessarily think Spurs deserve to be winning this particular game 2-0 but I said earlier they definitely deserve to be finishing fifth and I'm sure they will now well there is a slight delay to the restart here I wonder whether VAR is checking this goal not exactly sure what for Pedro Porro with a fine strike into the top corner thinks that he's put Spurs 2-0 up a trademark strike really from a man who's renowned for his ability to strike the ball viciously like that and it is given the goal is going to stand. It's 2-0 Tottenham on Talk Sport 2 with now. Don't forget that with now you can stream all the Sky Sports action like Liverpool against Wolves live right now. Contract free with a now membership. Search now sports. There'll be no final day nerve for Spurs here. Sheffield United are going to make a couple of changes. Our blaster and Archer going off because the game is surely over. And here come Rian Brewster and Andre Brooks onto the field for Sheffield United. Well, it's unfortunate for Sheffield United, but I think it's a big goal for Spurs. I think they would have seen this game out anyway. As I say, they would have to lose it to not finish in fifth spot. And I don't think they would have conceded two goals, although Sheffield United have certainly had two or more very good chances. They came in the first half, not so much in the second. But just that second goal just gives everybody that feeling as, yeah, we can do this now. Let's see this game out. So 2-0 Tottenham lead, and that's surely that here at Bramall Lane. A reminder of the scores around the grounds, around the country now, with Spurs in cruise control here live on TalkSport 2. Manchester City 2, West Ham 1, so the title heading to Manchester City. We're hearing it's now 3-1 to Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. Waiting for confirmation of that goal, Rodri. Such a vital player for Manchester City over so many years, yeah. particularly this season. In the moments where De Bruyne and Haaland have been absent, Rodri, who barely loses a game in a Manchester City shirt, how fitting that he should make it 3-1. A scorer, Rodri, of the goal that won Manchester City, the Champions League last season, and a scorer of the third goal at the Etihad Stadium that surely means the title now, without doubt, is Manchester City's. They lead 3-1, and the Tottenham fans will dance with delight again. Yeah, I was going to mention that Champions League goal, not quite as important as that one, but not far off. As you say, West Ham were only one goal away from handing it back to Arsenal and scoring that third goal. What a player he is. I mean, he doesn't even have to score goals to show his importance. I mean, he truly is world-class. That, that phrase is, is overused, but if you're going to pick a world eleven, absolutely he would be that guy holding. So 3-1 to Manchester City now. Arsenal won, Everton won, so Arsenal are not even doing their bit at the moment. They have to win and hope that Manchester City slip up, which certainly doesn't look likely. Arsenal 1, Everton 1. Liverpool lead 10-man Wolves by two goals to nil in Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge. 
It's Crystal Palace 3, Aston Villa 0. As Tottenham look for more here with Son, steps in field now onto the edge of the penalty area. Left footed low shot gathered by Fodderingham and his near post. The angle was slightly against Hyung Min Son there. Elsewhere in the Premier League, Chelsea 2, Bournemouth 1. Chelsea will finish sixth and will get European football under Pochettino. That's a sizable achievement given how they started the season. Uh, Newcastle still 3 1 up at Brentford. Brighton 0, Manchester United 0. Luton 2, Fulham 3, Burnley 0, Nottingham Forest 2. And you are up to date on the final day of the Premier League season. I think the jeopardy has certainly been taken out of the title race, and Scott, it's certainly been taken out of the race for fifth here now. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's been a really good couple of minutes for Spurs and the fans, hasn't it? They, they have pretty much put this game to bed by well, that second goal. And within a minute or so, hearing that Manchester City have scored at the Etihad as well. Here is Saar on the halfway line for Tottenham. A quick ball forward to the right wing position and Madison just drops deep and pops it back over the halfway line to where Van der Ven is waiting, left back position. Quickly on now to Son. Hoiberg is going to come on for Spurs very soon. Lovely ball by Son to Madison inside left channel. Kulosevsky, it's gone in! Beyond the goalkeeper who got a touch to it but couldn't keep it out. And Tottenham really are cruising here now. Madison pulled it back across and the final touch to turn it into the net looked like it came from Kulosevsky amid a crowded 18-yard box and for Tottenham Hotspur this is turning into a dream final day of the Premier League season it's now Sheffield United nil Tottenham three and the game is over yeah really good run off the ball from James Madison and the ball was played to him just inside his runner and he realised he had to try and cross the ball first time he did that on his left foot Kulusevsky gets there I do think it's got a touch off the defender it's a wonderful ball from the outside of his right boot from Son great run from Madison good pass I do wonder whether it still can't quite see whether it did get a touch off the defender but really whether it did or it didn't the goal should go to Kulusevsky a great run from him too and it's typical Sheffield United isn't it the Times can play well, certainly started this game well. But once they concede the first goal, they can collapse. They didn't infer in the first half, but they certainly have in the second now. It was a close run thing, wasn't it? Kulosevsky and Robinson, who was sliding in, he had to slide in really, as Tottenham make their substitution, by the way. pierre Emil Hoybier on for Papsar. But with Arsenal falling short on the final day in the Premier League and Spurs absolutely racing clear now against a Sheffield United team who've capitulated at home again there's no doubt Tottenham will achieve their objective of finishing fifth and now when the Spurs go marching in rings out from the away and away to our left hand side Crystal Palace four Aston Villa nil by the way a hat-trick for Jean-Philippe Mateta my goodness where has that scoring form come from and the Tottenham third goal has for now been credited to Kulusevski well, what about Jean-Philippe Mateta? Yeah, game? absolutely. And Crystal Palace and Glasnost. Can he keep his best players ahead for next season? Because they could be top ten next season. And it's a bit of dramatic final day at times in this Premier League season. What I would say though, Joe, if I were a Spurs fan, I wouldn't be thinking, oh, you know, what if, what if we had a that. I do think, obviously, Sellers Park and the way Palace are playing at the moment was always going to be difficult, but I also do think that it would have been a couple of really good days of celebration from Aston Villa. And if I were a betting man, which I'm not, I would have put money on Palace winning this one. <laughs> Absolutely. And Sheffield United with Robinson rolls the ball all the way back to goalkeeper Fodderingham. 3-0 to Tottenham, and we're into the final quarter of the game, and with it, of course, the final 23 minutes of the Premier League season. And once we're done here on TalkSport 2, you can switch over to TalkSport. Best download the app to do that. To hear the game day phone in with Jamie O'Hara and Gabby Agbon Lahore, the final one of this Premier League season. And you'll be able to have your say with Jamie and Gabby. 03717 Whether you're a Tottenham fan or a fan of any club in and around the Premier League, maybe a Crawley Town supporter after the fantastic day that Crawley have had, winning promotion to League One at Wembley after beating Crew, you can have your say. Sheffield United have given it away. And it's Vinny Souza inside his own box with a very risky pass, but Spurs couldn't quite take advantage of that. And the ball is back with Sheffield United and their goalkeeper, 
Fotheringham, who you have to feel for him, really. He's been absolutely under siege every time he's played across the course of the season. And Sheffield United have got this, have had this very alarming contendency uh, to simply collapse in matches, Scott, and that's what's happening 3-0 Tottenham. But he's been Sheffield United's best player. And, you know, when, when, you, when you look over the whole season, you think, how's he done on an individual basis? Obviously, most of the players, you'd be saying, just out of their depth. He's not been. He's done OK. And to concede over 100 goals and to have done OK, I think that pretty much tells you exactly from a defensive point of view where, where Sheffield United have been this season. It's not been good enough. Recruitment has been so poor for Paul Heggenbottom and for Chris Wilder. Never stood a chance. Recruitment this summer is going to be absolutely crucial. Last couple of changes for Sheffield United. Mason Holgate on load from Everton has replaced Max Lowe. And good to see Dan Jeverson back out on the field of play as Ben Brett and Diaz get a standing ovation from the Bramall Lane crowd. It might be the last time they see him in the red and white because he's on loan from Villarreal and surely won't play in the championship next season. So Brett and Diaz goes off and Dan Jeverson, who's been absent all season due to an undisclosed health issue, is now back on the field of play, his first appearance of the season. And that's good to see for the youngster, the 20-year-old. The ball is inside the Tottenham penalty area. Jefferson pulls it back straight away in the last touch. Deflected off Dragushin and then Jefferson himself. And out of play for a goal kick to Tottenham, who are 3-0 up with 20 minutes to go. Fulham have a, have a fourth at Kenilworth Road. Luton 2, Fulham 4. Harry Wilson has scored. And so it's raining goals, really, isn't it? On the final day of the Premier League season, the only game where we haven't had goals is at the Amex, where it's still Brighton nil, Manchester United nil. A reminder, Manchester City heading for the Premier League title. They lead West Ham 3-1. Arsenal 1, Everton 1 is the latest score live right now over on Talk Sport. I think I'm right in saying it was already... a. Uh a record for goals in a 38 Premier League season and just needed 14 more to be the record <laughs> of a, a 42 game. That's back in 92-93. I think it's safe to say, Joe, we're well past that. We've easily beaten it, haven't we, Scott? 29 goals scored so far today in the Premier League and counting. I'm sure there may be more yet to come. Absolutely. And indeed, there are more to come. Maybe Brentford here. 2, Newcastle 3, Johan Visser for Brentford. Remember, they were 3-0 down. Crystal Palace 5, Aston Villa 0, a second for Ebery Chiesa, and Manchester United lead at Brighton by a goal to nil through Diogo Dalla. So Manchester United leading 1-0. As it stands, Manchester United would miss out on seventh spot. But if Newcastle were to concede again, Manchester United would leapfrog them and avoid finishing in their lowest position, finishing position in Premier League history, which at the moment is going to be eighth. I think I'm still right, I'm right in saying that they'd still need to win the FA Cup to play Europe next season. Yes, that's correct. But if he wants they to want avoid to avoid that, finishing Hag, eighth oh, and the, being known as the that, manager that, that led the team to their worst ever finish in the Premier League, the worst finish for Manchester United since 1990, then they want Newcastle to concede again. Burnley 1, Nottingham Forest 2. Josh Cullen with a goal back for Burnley, who have already been relegated. 3-0 to Tottenham at Sheffield United here. And so the two goals for Kulusevski, sandwiched in between a howitzer from Pedro Porro, as is his trademark. And now Tottenham are looking for more. Pedro Porro has charged down the clearance of Robinson, but he did it with his arm, and it'll bounce down and away for a free kick to Sheffield United. 29,000 here today. Sheffield United, it'll be played 38, won three, drew seven, lost 28 and conceded 104 goals. And Chris Wilder does have something of the rebuilding job on, I think, Scott. Oh, I think that's fair to say. I mean, just like to doff my cap, really, to the Bramall Lane faithful for, for sticking with the team. Yep. You know, it's not as if they, of course, they've been unhappy at times and of course they've moved the team off, but... They've always turned up, they've always tried to, to give the role, and they're, they're sensible fans, they they know exactly what's happened, and really their club didn't have a chance this season. So 3-0 Sheffield United lead. William Hill have the latest odds, they're our official betting partner of TalkSport 2's Premier League coverage right now. Tottenham to score next at 17-20, Sheffield United to score the next goal at 16-5, no further goal, 19-10. That's all thanks to William Hill 
Get epic value all season with William Hill, 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. So Manchester City are uh, just over a quarter of an hour away from a fourth successive Premier League crown. The first time that would ever have happened in top flight history. Mm -hmm. When you think of all the great Liverpool and Manchester United teams of the past, and there have been some great Arsenal sides as well, though Arsenal haven't managed to win it three times in a row, you'd have to say it's a magnificent achievement. Joe, I've spoken a lot about it on the, the Premier League All Access podcast as well as with Adrian. It's just nothing short of sensational, it really is. Across from Holgate, deflected and headed away by uh, Benton Core from the edge of the Tottenham penalty area, hoisted deep into the box by Ahmed Hodzic and then a big sprawling dive over Elabiot from Vicario as he gets to the back header from Pedro Porro. And then if you go on the internet and you go back, what, 135 years and you see how difficult it is to how many teams have won three on the spin, Huddersfield 20s, Arsenal 30s, Liverpool in the 80s and twice under Sir Alex Ferguson, but no one's done it for a fourth consecutive year. Yes, of course, there's been money being spent, but don't tell me Sir Alex Ferguson didn't have money to spend and Liverpool weren't able to attract the, the best players in the 80s as well. History in the making. Tottenham on the attack here with Brennan Johnson inside right channel looking for a fourth. He turns it towards the near post and it's cleared away by Holgate before Son can get there. Tottenham will have another corner, leading by three goals to nil on TalkSport 2. Here come Emerson Royale and Oliver Skip. And so a double change made by Posta Coglu, and it's Pedro Porro and Bentancourt who are going off. So that will be a, a simple straight swap. And Pedro Porro gets a rousing ovation from the Tottenham fans away to the left in that lower tier behind the goal. And after... All the disappointments, well, all the consternation, I think, more than anything of earlier on this week. And Tottenham ultimately will get the job well done on the final day. Scott. Spurs played well against City. You know, and, they did. And, and, but for that, so, I don't want to say miss, but you know, the Son chance that they didn't put it in the back of the net, they could easily have drawn. And I, but, but even take that out of the, 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 the situation, I, I thought, first of all, it was different tactics from, from Ange Foster Cogley, which I think was the right thing to do against City. But two, it was really well executed, and they very nearly got something out of that game. I think that Son has had his toe trod on here, and that's why he's gone down, and a red card out of the pocket of the referee. Son went down inside the 18-yard box as though he was stamped on, and the referee, Andy Madley, amid a melee of players, has produced a red card straight out of the top pocket of the referee. And so... Son, in a seemingly innocuous moment just before the free kick was taken, I think it's Andre Brooks who may well have been sent off here. Son, in that melee of players, and Brooks has sort of swiped at him almost with his knee. Son has gone down straight away. VAR, of course, will have a check on it. But Andre Brooks, the substitute, was the offender. And the 20-year-old here has received a straight red card from the referee, Andy Madley. VAR will take another look at this, and Brooks has still not left the field. What do you make of it, Scott Minto? It looks like Sheffield United are going to be down to 10 men. Yeah, I'd like to see a, a, a better replay of it, but from what I could tell, I mean, it's just ridiculous from Brooks. Whether it's a, a red card or Son's made the, the most of it, he's, they're, they're, they're all really close in the, uh, waiting for the corner. And there's almost been a push and a bit of a stamp from Brooks. I can't quite tell whether it was an accidental one or whether it was a... It looked like a deliberate motion to me. He's, he's gone into him. We've got a big monitor in our commentary position. We can see it now. And then Son goes down, holding on to his, his, his right ankle. His right, I thought he'd been stamped on or stood on. The, the camera angle is only shown from the waist up. But he definitely sort of pushes him. But Son goes down and then holds his ankle. So, you know, we're then assuming that he's actually stamped on him. And still the VAR check continues here. Ange Postacoglu, we've heard, is not a fan of VAR. And the referee's actually going to go and look at the pitch side monitor. So, usually in this sort of situation, the decision is overturned. And actually, the reaction is really telling because Brooks immediately walks back into the penalty area to do his defending again. So, I think everybody expects that the red card won't stand, will be cancelled if you like and Brooks will stay on the field I, I think I, 
you know, what, watching a, another replay, I think it's a yellow card, not a red, personally. He shouldn't be doing it. He's pushed into him. I don't think he's stamped on him as a, as a proper stamp. And I wouldn't be surprised if he turns it from a red to a yellow. Brentford 2, Newcastle 4. Bruno Guimaraes just scored for Newcastle. That surely condemns Manchester United to eighth now. What's the referee going to do? He's checked his pitch side monitor and he's going to hold up the red card. I think he's going to suggest that as he speaks to Andre Brooks that the red card is overturned. So Brooks stays on. And wow. so Tottenham will have the corner as we expected. 3-0 up, but Sheffield United remain with 11 on the field. I'm not surprised he's taken rescinded the red. I am surprised he's not giving him a yellow for that because he was still pushing at him. Madison's corner, right-footed out, swinging, headed up by Romero and gathered by the goalkeeper. Well, that would have been the ultimate revenge for Tottenham to have scored from there. Following him, belts the ball upfield, and there might be an opportunity down the middle here for Rian Brewster. He knocks it down, he's into the area, but Brewster gets his shot all wrong. A player who hasn't scored a goal in his Premier League career, and well wide in the end. No chance that that was ever going to find the target. They are quite lively, the Sheffield United fans. You have to give them great credit, actually for keeping the atmosphere quite raucous, even though their team are 3-0 down, they're already relegated and they've got nothing to play for. Yeah, absolutely, and once Fotheringham caught that ball, Ryan Brewster was running out and, and the Spurs defender just tried to stand in, in the own half, or in Sheffield United's half, to play him offside, but Ryan Brewster was in his own half as well. The problem was the ball came down with a bit of snow on, so by the time he was waiting for it, and then it bounced and waiting for that to come down as well, they gave Tottenham defenders the chance to come across, and it was it was a difficult one for Brewster, really. The VAR took just over two minutes to make that decision. The decision being that Brooks stays on the field. The red card is overturned. No red card for the young midfield player. It, it wasn't a red card, but it was a definite, and it was a more than just a push. It was a real aggressive push. And I feel he should have got a yellow card for that. I think he's got away. It's definitely not a red, but I think he's got away with not having anything. Now Johnson, who has scored goals on this ground before for Nottingham Forest, has gone down on the far side, caught by Robinson, a free kick to Tottenham in the right-back position on the far side of the field. In fact, it's just going to be a throw given by referee Madley. Arsenal won, Everton won, so even on a day when Arsenal winning wouldn't have changed the outcome of the Premier League title race, they're failing to win. Live on Talk Sport right now at the Emirates, Manchester City lead, West Ham 3-1, and the title, that Premier League trophy, will have sky blue ribbons attached to it. You'll hear the trophy lift on Talk Sport live from inside the stadium. Here goes Madison for Tottenham. Lovely ball up the middle, perfectly weighted. Son is racing after it. Son inside the penalty area, angled tight, jinx in field. Whips in a lovely ball for Johnson, who hits it over the top on the half volley at the back post. And Postacoglu turns away, hands on his head. Lovely flowing counter-attack from Spurs and really... Johnson should have put them 4-0 up. Oh, what a lovely ball for Madison. Maybe just slightly over here, and Son does well because he's come a little bit to the left. So then, rather than have a shot himself, he's come back onto his right foot. It's a little dink to the far post. And Brendan Johnson, because he's running so fast and it bounces, he's not able just to compose himself. It's, it's a wonderful little ball, delicious ball from Son. And because it bounces up, and because he's running so fast, Brennan Johnson, he's not able, it actually comes off his shin. He's not able to get over the top of it and keep it down. 4-0 to Tottenham as Sheffield United thump the ball up the middle and a header away by Dragushin, not very far, facing his own goal and then a portrait and header by Harmer in the sun facing towards the cop end and it's straight through to Vicario. Actually, Sheffield United were much more threatening in the first half. They do compete at times in matches, Scott, but simply not for long enough. If you remember, they were ahead twice at Manchester United, they were ahead at Newcastle, they were ahead at home to Forest, went on to lose all three convincingly, and yeah. that really sums them up. You've named just three, Joe. Honestly, it, it, it's very much them in patches, fine, and if they, they can start off well, but if they don't get that first goal, or even if they do and then concede, they can just collapse like a, a pack of cards, and that's the problem that Chris Wilder and Paul Heggenbottom has had to deal with this season. The players at this level simply aren't good enough. And the fact that they've got 17 players either on loan or out of contract, I think it can sort of wipe the slate clean. As I say, it's all about the recruitment in the summer. Here's Son, left wing position, getting the boos from the Sheffield United fans. He rather meanders in field. Held up by Harmer. Sheffield United funneling 
red and white shirted players back behind the ball. The ball is with van der Ven, corner of the 18-yard box. He's just wriggled away from Vinny Souza, lunged it wide to Madison, who gets the return ball from Romero. Tottenham very comfortable here. They have been really ever since the second goal in particular, but I don't think there's been any great sense that anything other than a Tottenham win would be the case today. Manchester City lead 3-1 against West Ham, the title heading to the Etihad. Arsenal 1, Everton 1 live right now on Talk Sports. So Arsenal will miss out on the final day of the season. Chelsea 2, Bournemouth 1. Chelsea will finish 6th. Brentford 2, Newcastle 4. Newcastle to finish 7th. Manchester United will finish 8th. Here's an opportunity for Johnson to pull it back towards Kulosevsky. He's on a hat-trick, remember, stabbed away by Ahmed Hodzic, who pokes it away only as far as Emerson Royale. Now Son takes up possession. Quick ball to Kulosevsky, lovely feet. First time shot is deflected, it's come out to Skip. His shot is blocked as well. Now Madison gets to the dead ball line. He's wriggled away from Vinny Souza, has he? Right down in front of the goal line. And goal kick, says Andy Madley, the referee. Uh, Brighton nil, Manchester United won then, but United will finish eighth. Liverpool two, Wolves nil. Wolves have been playing with ten men for the whole of the second half in Jurgen Klopp's final game in charge of Liverpool. Crystal Palace 5, Aston Villa nil. Very excited to see what Crystal Palace can do next season under Oliver Glasner. In fact, Jean-Philippe Mateta, who scored a hat-trick today, has scored 13 goals since Oliver Glasner took charge. Burnley 1, Nottingham Forest 2, and Luton 2, Fulham 4. So, mathematical confirmation of Luton's relegation today. Clearance from the goalkeeper foddering him, high raking ball upfield, hooked over his shoulder and away from danger for Tottenham by Hoybier. And now an opportunity for Kurosevsky to stride forward, he's poked it wide towards uh, Johnson, it was Skip rather, and the pass from Skip over hit and out of play. How encouraged would you be for Tottenham going forward, given that they'll have Europe to contend with as well next season, Scott Minter? So there will be more games of football for Ange Postecoglou to work his side through. It encouraged for what? Well, there is a sense that they've progressed, haven't they, in the Premier League this season for sure, even despite not finishing in the top four. Just as I say that, Sheffield United looking to break up the middle with Harmer. Harmer's won it back off Van der Ben. He's floated in across deep to the back post. Brewster trying to bring it down in the sunshine. In support is Brooks. Brooks looks up, lays the ball square and in infield. Trusty, deflected cross, cleared away. And Madison will feed Hoivier, and Hoivier will clip the ball downfield and away from danger. I just wonder, do you expect them to potentially challenge for the top four next season? Um, not with this squad. Not if they're combining, you know, the Premier League and Europe. I, I think Chelsea will get better. I think United should get better. I think Newcastle will be there or thereabouts as well. And don't forget, this is a season where Tottenham have had no European football at all. So I, I, I do think it's going to be difficult to combine for them. And I, I include Aston Villa in that as well. Aston Villa, quite similar to Newcastle last season. Brilliant season, without a doubt. You know, I'm surprised they fell out of the Europa Conference League, to be totally honest with you. But I think both those teams, with the squad they've got at the moment, they've overperformed this season. And if you're going to chuck in Europe on top of that, again, more so with Spurs with Villa because they had that, although there would be a much more difficult competition for, for Aston Villa. Quite simply, again, it's about recruitment and who you can add to that strength and depth. Sheffield United nil, Spurs four, and there'll be two late changes here for Tottenham. Two youngsters are going to come on. Mikey Moore, who became Tottenham's youngest ever Premier League player against Manchester City on Tuesday. And uh, Dane Scarlett will make his seventh appearance of the season. All of those have come off the subs bench, and it's the main men in attack of Madison and Son, who will come off the field here for Spurs in the final few moments. Manchester United lead 2-0 at Brighton, Rasmus Hoyland with the second. And of course, Manchester United, if they win the FA Cup against Manchester City next Saturday live on Talk Sport, I would seal a European place as well as lifting the trophy. It's a small word if, isn't it? That's big well, meaning. Yeah, that's it. I was going to say that's a big if, isn't it? But Manchester City are minutes away now from confirming another Premier League title. 3-1 to the good against West Ham. 
Arsenal won, Everton won, so it doesn't look like even Arsenal are going to win their game, but maybe they've been impacted by the fact that City yeah. were 2-0 up so early on. Scott. Yeah, I think I'm speaking to the wrong audience here when I say it'd be a shame if Arsenal don't at least get the win <laughs> and, and show, show that they you know, were there right to the very end and just wanted to... They didn't lose it, Manchester City won it. But Tottenham absolutely, be, I think they've been affected by knowing what's going on at the Etihad. Well, Tottenham will be relishing it, won't they? Every second of this. Emerson Royale, right of centre, 30 yards out, wide to the far side, and Johnson. Johnson back in field to skip with the number four on the back of his dark blue shirt. Sheffield United thump the ball downfield through Brooks. Just over a minute to go here on TalkSport 2. Remember, the game day phone in with Jamie O'Hara and Gabby Agbon Lahore will be on TalkSport as well as the trophy lift from the Etihad Stadium, once we're done with our commentary here, 03717 to have your say. And make sure you download the TalkSport app so you can simply swipe between here and TalkSport to get all of the remaining action and all of the reaction as well. Jeff Stenning and Annie McCoist back on TalkSport breakfast tomorrow morning for even more of that. The ball is with the Sheffield United goalkeeper following him. I can't believe we're going to have eight minutes of added time. I don't think either team wants that. I mean, is that really necessary in the context? What was that rule they were thinking of? The, the, the mercy rule, was it? Ah. Well, the game's over. It's 3-0 to Spurs. No doubt where the points are going. We'll have eight added minutes at the end of it. And some of the Sheffield United fans are heading away and you... you, you you have to admire, actually, their support today. They haven't turned on the players for one moment, no, actually. No, not at all. It was a really good start from the team. The, the, the atmosphere created before the game at the start of the game and, and, and pretty much throughout the first half was incredible. But, you know, they've seen their team do this week in, week out almost. Play well in patches, but then just collapse. And you're right, that second goal. And the second, the third goal came soon after the second, but the second goal killed the tie for them. They're booing the added time, the Sheffield United players. As supporters, rather. Maybe the players are <laughs> feeling like doing it as well. Trusty's played the ball back to Vinny Souza. Midway inside opposition territory. That's the cue for more Sheffield United fans to get up and leave. They'll have lost their last seven games. Not one since February the 10th. Here, down the right-hand side, as the cross is dinked in by Holgate. Sliding into clear is Dragushin. Now, there is a goal back for West Ham at Manchester City. Thomas Socek has scored, mm. Manchester City 3, West Ham 2. So we are back in that situation. In fact, that goal has been ruled out. So it stays 3-1 to Manchester City. Socek, we think for handball. So 3-1 oh, yeah, Manchester tease, City. Well, that, that kept the Spurs fans maybe listening to us on tenterhooks just for a second. It wouldn't have changed anything, remember, though, because oh. Arsenal yes. are 1-1 with Everson. Good skill by young Mikey Moore, shuffling feet in field from the left, but there was a handball from Kulusevski in the build-up. 16 years, 282 days old. What a prospect. I'm a lot older than you. Do you remember when you were 16? <laughs> yeah. Well, I even can't. that for me is quite a long time ago now, Scott. The Sheffield United go long downfield and Brewster is offside. I think what's really important, though, Joe, in, in terms of those youngsters coming in, I know Mikel, uh, Mikel Arteta, I can't remember who it was now, but played a 15-year-old. I think it's very important not just to say, OK, we've got talented kids here, but and we, look at us, aren't we putting in, in youngsters and, and bedding them in? We've got to make sure that they're ready to be training regularly with the first team and not just as a dip in and then the next appearance is two years down the line or whatever. I don't think that's the case with Mikey Moore, but I think it's very important when you put youngsters in who are 15, 16 and not quite ready emotionally to get into the first team that they they are looked after. Arsenal have scored. They lead Everton 2-1 live on Talk Sport right now. Kai Havertz has got the goal, but it isn't going to make any difference to the title because Manchester City is still 3-1 up. City have done their bit. Tottenham have done their bit. They're going to finish fifth and get Europa League football above Chelsea. We're two and a half minutes through eight added here, live at Bramall Lane, and Spurs are 3-0 in front, and they're looking for more goals. Van der Ven is hacked down, about 25 yards out by Robin Robinson. Yellow card for the Sheffield United captain. Van der Ven, understandably, not at all happy with the challenge. Free kick Tottenham. Yeah, but I also understand the Robinson tackle. I mean, it's been a long, long season, hasn't it? Actually, he won play of the year, but... 
It's been a long, long season. It's been a long, long game. With eight minutes, you don't need to be put up. He's just gone past him. It's a yellow card, he knows that. He wants the season to end, so does everybody connected with Sheffield United and Spurs. When we talk about that. Hoybier and Kurosevsky standing over the ball for Tottenham. Just over 25 yards out, maybe. Left of centre as we look at it. Any chance that Hoybier, who doesn't exactly score a plethora of goals, goes for goal here, I wonder. Long way out. Oh, it's got to. It's worth a pop. Fourth minute of added time. Hoybier, not scored since December of 2022, right-footed into the wall. Drops back out towards Hoybier, who cushions the header into the path of Emerson Royale. Not made to the defender, surges into the box, was he brought down by Vinny Souza. It was a tangle of legs, no penalty, says the referee. Cleared upfield, and the ball is back with Van der Ven on the halfway line. Full-time scores starting to filter in around the grounds on the final day of the Premier League season. Live on Talk Sport 2. Manchester City are about to clinch the Premier League title. The reaction will come on Talk Sport into the evening and on breakfast tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., with Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoist. Right through the rest of tomorrow as well. Talk Sport will be the place to be, and you can have your say, 03717 on the game day phone to come. Because Manchester City are going to beat West Ham. They lead 3-1. Two for Foden, one for Rodri, and that ultimately, despite Arsenal beating Everton 2-1, is going to be enough to get the job done. I can't wait to see that VAR handball. I well, hope, to, hope it is. So check, you mean? Yeah, that would that would have been interesting if. Well, it would have been nervy. An argument on that because three-two, it would have been nervy with Arsenal getting what looks like it'd be a winning goal. But it wouldn't ultimately have well, changed the outcome necessarily. City would, City would be nervous and West Ham would have nothing to lose. <laughs> Kulusevski left wing position. Three added as Kulusevski floats in a high cross and it's well gathered by Fodderingham under little pressure high above his head. Fodderingham now with 27 goals conceded in his last eight Premier League appearances. The goalkeeper has not had a lot of protection. Burnley 1, Nottingham Forest 2 is a full-time score. Brighton 0, Manchester United 2 but Manchester United are set to finish in their lowest ever Premier League finishing position of eighth. They play Manchester City in the FA Cup final next Saturday. City with a chance to do the domestic double, it looks like. It'll be live on Talk Sport from Wembley Stadium. Spurs 3-0 up here. Can they seek a fourth, a fitting end to the season? Emerson Royale is fouled. And he landed awkwardly there. Looks like he's hurt about 15 yards into the Sheffield United half. Andy Madley was spot on right in front of the incident. Austin Trusty's down as well. The last thing you need in the final minutes, not just of a match, but of the season, is to pick up an injury. And so full time's continuing to come into us here in the Premier League. Crystal Palace have beaten Aston Villa by five goals to nil. At Selhurst Park, a hat-trick for Jean-Philippe Mateta for Villa, possibly on the beach. They have Champions League football to come next season. Luton Town's relegation from the Premier League confirmed. Nottingham Forest winners today, coupled with the Luton defeat. 4-2 at home to Fulham, and Luton will go back down to the Championship after just one season in the top flight, their first ever campaign at Premier League level. We've only got a minute and 45 seconds to go here at Bramall Lane. Spurs fans will have a good journey home down the M1. They lead 3-0 at Sheffield United and will finish fifth. And that, in the end, is certainly a season of progress, given they were eighth last season in the Premier League with 60 points. They'll end this season fifth with 66. Vicario is well outside his own box. Little cushion pass to Van der Ven and Dragushin rolls it to the feet of his goalkeeper. Chelsea have secured European football. They will finish sixth under Maurizio Pochettino. They've beaten Bournemouth by two goals to one. Well done to Chelsea, given the position they were in, even only a few weeks ago. Well done to Pochettino for turning it around in what has been very, very difficult circumstances. You know, he still has a big soft spot for Spurs. Some of the Chelsea fans don't like that. I, I personally say you've got to get over that. He's done a very good job there. Good ball, Emerson Royale out to the right and Brennan Johnson one-on-one -on -one with the defender, Trusty. Johnson's deflected cross, blocked off. Trusty, has he prevented the corner? I think he has. Tottenham throw very close to the corner flag. The eight minutes of stoppage time are up here 
Andy Madley has looked at his watch and confirmed a dream final day for Tottenham supporters. Spurs have won at Sheffield United by three goals to nil. They have confirmed Europa League football and fifth place. Spurs will be back in Europe next season. And to make matters even better for Tottenham fans, it looks as though the Premier League title will be going to Manchester City and not to their great rivals, Arsenal. As a fan has made his way onto the field, I think from the Sheffield United side of the ground on the far side, thankfully they've got that idiot off the field very quickly here. Full-time scores coming in around the grounds around the country, but Tottenham knew they only needed a point to finish fifth. And fifth, indeed, is progress. Tangible progress compared to last season. Ange Postacoglu and co may ultimately feel it could have been more. Ultimately, Spurs have ended up just two points of fourth and a Champions League place. But European football will be back at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for next season. The two goals on the day from Kurosevsky, sandwiching between a screamer from Pedro Porro. And it has finished here. Sheffield United nil. Tottenham Hotspur 3. It's time now for us to pick our man of the match with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Man of the match on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Enterprise has vans of all shapes and sizes. So if you've got a plan, we've got a van. The celebrations have started at the Etihad Stadium. Congratulations to Manchester City, who have done their bit. They have beaten West Ham United by three goals to one, and that confirms Manchester City as champions for a record fourth straight time. The first time that has ever happened, four in a row in the top flight for Manchester City. Well done to Pep Guardiola and co. They have pipped Arsenal on the final day. City have done what they do best. They've got the result when they need it. That result is filtering through to the Tottenham fans who are dancing with joy away to our left-hand side. But for Manchester City and Pep Guardiola, the indefatigables, they've done it again. Manchester City are the cream of the crop. They are the Premier League champions. We'll get Scott Minto's reaction to that in just a moment. But first, Scott, your man of the match as Spurs have cruised to victory here at Bramall Lane. Well, look, I, I think from a Sheffield United point of view, Wes Fodderinger, which pretty much sums up Sheffield United, was, was the best player, certainly in the first half and kept United in the game. I was impressed by Mickey van der Ven, who's obviously playing out of position, playing as left back, but look, he's got two goals. He's played as the striker today, which is not his usual position. I thought he played very well. You could tell he wanted the hat-trick. Got to give it to Dejan Kriveleski. Full times around the grounds, around the country, and Spurs have won 3-0 here. Dan Kulosevsky, our man of the match with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Man of the match on TalkSport 2 with Enterprise Rent-A-Car. From the best lineup in the UK, Enterprise has 450 branches with all the vehicles your business needs. And just to confirm, full times that we had missed, uh, hadn't brought you around the grounds, around the country on the final day of the Premier League season. Liverpool 2, Wolves 0, so Liverpool have finished Jürgen Klopp's era at the club with a victory on the final day on a slot of course set to take over at Anfield. Arsenal beat Everton by two goals to one live on Talk Sport, but it's not enough for them to win the Premier League title. 20 years of hurt goes on and on for Arsenal, but it's Manchester City who have won it again on the final day once more, Pep Guardiola's team. It's four in a row after beating West Ham United and Manchester City are kings of the Premier League again, Scott Minter. Four in a row, never done, been done before. Six in seven years. I think it's just nothing short of sensational. And what you've got is a such a well-run machine, both on and off the pitch. You've got Pep Guardiola, I believe, is one of the greatest managers ever in the history of football. And, you know, the legacy, even before he came to England, there were teams wanting to, in the Premier League, in the Championship, I even see it in League One, wanting to play the kind of Pep Guardiola way. And he's come to England, it took him a year to adjust, he knew what he wanted after that year. Spent a bit of money on fullbacks, funnily enough. And, um, and he, he's just absolutely bossed it since, hasn't he? Jurgen Klopp, I think, was fantastic as Liverpool and certainly ran Manchester City close. But to win six in seven and, and four on the spin, honestly, Joe, you know, I didn't even get to win one. I was fortunate enough to win the FA Cup, but didn't win a Premier League title. But I can understand what goes into doing it on a daily basis for four years 
it is nothing short of sensational from a technical point of view, but even more so from a psychological point of view. Well, these scenes at the Etihad Scott are absolutely extraordinary here. Scenes that we've been accustomed to seeing over recent years in the Premier League. The Etihad pitch is absolutely flooded with Manchester City supporters. It's just a sea of sky blue beneath the blue sky up ahead and the sun shining down on the Etihad pitch and they're jumping up and down. There are the Manchester City inflatable bananas as well. And for Pep Guardiola, 17 trophies as Manchester City manager. He, the man who brought the Champions League to Manchester City for the first time. Two FA Cups, two Community Shields, two League Cups, a Super Cup, a Club World Cup, six Premier League titles, as you say. Four in a row, nobody's ever done that in the top flight before. Where does Pep Guardiola rank in terms of the very greatest of managers in English football? Sir Alex and, and Paisley and Shankly maybe and others. Where, where is Pep Guardiola in the conversation? No, don't ask me that, Joe, because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a massive, massive Pep Guardiola fan. And, and actually, you, you don't just talk about him with English football, you talk about him with world football. You know, what he's done is 12 league titles in 15 years. It's, what, 33 major titles in 15 years. And there's one still possibly to come next week as well. And also the legacy, as I talked about, the, the style of football that everyone wants to try and copy. To say he's up there with the very best is the least I can say about him. And just one final word, Scott, on what Tottenham have done here in our live commentary this afternoon on Talk Sport 2. Spurs have beaten Sheffield United 3-0 to reach the Europa League. Is that... Overall, on balance, a successful 23-24 for Tottenham and Ange Postecoglou. It's massive progress. That's what it is. You know, he even says, you know, finishing fourth wouldn't be success. It's about winning trophies. But this team at the moment is a million miles away from winning, certainly the Premier League, not necessarily a, an FA Cup or, or the Carabao Cup, although we have to take that a little bit more seriously because obviously he made changes in that. But Spurs fans are crying out for one good football and two winning trophies. Now they're seeing good football. Now can he turn that into winning trophies? And I genuinely think in terms of when they've got the best 11 out, they can be a match for anyone. But in terms of a whole season, they still got four or five at least signings to make. The strength in depth is not there. They need that out and out goal scorer. And people said earlier in the season they didn't need Harry Kane because they're already scoring goals. I said nonsense. Who doesn't need Harry Kane? He's been brilliant. In this Harry Kane and this team, they would have finished fourth, for sure. So they need a striker and, and they need a few backups as well, maybe a, a left-back, a goalkeeper and also a, a central midfielder. But in terms of this season, very, very good. Scott, thanks very much indeed as ever. Really enjoyed it today. And across the Premier League season, we'll hear much more of Scott Minter, of course, uh, over the summer on the TalkSport Network and into next season as well. So Spurs have beaten Sheffield United here by three goals to nil to finish fifth. Tottenham fans, you can have your say on the game day phone in live in about 20 minutes' time over on Talk Sport, where they'll bring you the trophy lift at the Etihad. Manchester City, the sky blue ribbons are on the Premier League trophy. They've beaten West Ham 3-1 to crown themselves champions against City. The trophy lift on the way very shortly, live on Talk Sport. And that number for the game day phone in 03717 double two, double three, double four.